And we will jump straight into this by saying hi, YouTube. Welcome to the final time that we are getting this introduction. Hi, it's been one hell of a journey, ladies and gentlemen. And I can't, I can't express my thank yous enough to everyone that's been a part of this journey and has joined us for all of this. This show has literally taken the top spot of any anime show or just show that I've seen so far. Its characters are great. The plot is great. Everything is moving and believable. And and I don't say that lightly. Like I've seen quite a number of shows that like chat has chosen for me to watch. And this is one that I can genuinely say I'm thankful for as well because of the depth and like realism that is in it. So thank you, chat. Thank you for all of you guys that have been a part of this journey along with all of us. Like, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you guys. And I am humbled by the amount of support and love and everything that's come through with it. I do want to state, though, hey, this might be broken up into six different parts, seven different parts, depending on how long we go. Come and join us on Twitch. Every Friday, we will be doing this until we get through it all, right? So it might not be the final time you hear me say hello, but it's the final time you hear me say it at the beginning of an episode. Uh, so I do want to go ahead and say, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you all. Make sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe. And I will do this by saying this channel is not for predictions. This channel is quite literally about analyzing and promoting mental health elements. Guys, if you guys do identify with any of the characters in the show, please do seek out mental health help from mental health professionals in your area. I am not one to promote any of my services on here. I am quite literally just because I want to have a fun time psychoanalyzing these characters, going in deep, talking about these mental health concepts and helping people maybe realize something from them. And I do want to go ahead and, 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 and be open about that. I want to say a big thank you to Netflix and Riot for this amazing show. I also want to say a big thank you to you guys for watching the incredibly long videos. Who knows? This might be the longest, longest video on the channel. Who knows? It might. It might be. Who knows? Who knows? You know say? Who knows? But I do want to say, guys, if you guys have enjoyed these analyses, uh, come and vote for your favorite show. We are probably going to be doing a poll to find out what show replaces Arcane. So come and vote for your favorite show, a show that you like, that you feel needs a good analyzing from. Uh, if you guys want to support me, I do have a Ko-Fi or a coffee, and I do have a throne uh, here on. And join us on the Discord because that's where I'm most active. So you guys can go ahead and find out, and it would mean the absolute world to have you guys on here on Twitch or on YouTube just supporting, sharing, liking doing what needs to be done with that being said oof oof it's friday night it's friday night ladies and gentlemen i have an essay to do but i i, I will see how long this goes with that being said man i'm not ready to start this but i guess we have to here we go See, now that Netflix... I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> See, Netflix, I'm Start off with just the Netflix logo. Oh, fuck. If I did that, I would be insane. <laughs> oh, let him cook. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay, no, realistically speaking, I do want to talk about the title. The title is called The Monster You Created. Now, this actually catches my... Hold on. We're, we're, we're talking about this face, face cam. This catches my attention. The monster you created. Right. Let's talk about this title real quick because that title is huge. The monster you created. So what monster is this in of itself? And this is where my where my mind is rattling, right? If Jinx... If, if we take the title and we say that Jinx is this monster... That you created. Is the you talking to Vi? Is the you because of, of what happened when they were children? And how Vi wasn't there and able to go ahead and lend the proper support network for like Jinx to not become this monster that she needs to go ahead and be? Is this more of a monster towards Silco? Because Silco went ahead and allowed this surgery or this thing to happen. Is this monster more a symbolism to like Vander? Because Vander wasn't able to protect her in the end. Is, it, is this monster more of a symbolism towards society in and of itself? Because society, from the very beginning of this show, was not a safe environment for Jinx to not become this monster in and of itself. And even past that, right? And even past that, is the monster 
that you created us by us literally being there and this is this is very meta but by us literally being there and supporting them and making these some of our favorite characters and people that we love to play and that we create these storylines and adventures and moments of growth and hate and so on and so forth that we literally cement these characters as the monsters that they are this is why the like as we go through this the monster you created is 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 it is a powerful episode name. It really is a powerful episode name. And I'm I'm actually kind of curious about the previous episode names. But the monster is the League of, of Legends community. <laughs> um, but that's why it's... Uh, I, I don't know how to put it. The, the, the length of this video, it's the monster that Arcane created. Absolutely. But when we're analyzing this, I've... Has anyone ever been told this? And and we are get we are getting into this. I am the monster that you created. Anyone ever been told this? Or you're the monster in this relationship. You're the monster in that. You know what I find funny? I I'll be honest. I I've been told that even though they were it was cool ranch Doritos. There's a whole story behind that. I know. I know it sounds like I'm throwing out random phrases, but there's literally like a whole lore behind that. Uh we're quite literally like even if you get cheated on or even if whatever happens, like people like to spin a narrative and make you out to be a bad person. And sometimes since I've always stated at the very first episode, our very first couple of episodes, words matter. When the kids were calling Powder a jinx, what did jinx become? What did Powder become? Jinx. A jinx, yeah. As a new mom, those are the words I fear the most. Yeah, uh, Predator's voice, dude. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's scary. It, it, it's, it's scary because... People's narratives will always shift. And even, even for example, even if you have kids as they grow older, you know, we all make mistakes as parents, as adults, as whatever. And sometimes we don't know the effect that these mistakes have on our kids. Sometimes they may latch onto them. Sometimes they may not. But those words can resonate deep and really provoke a deep fear inside of us. She became the jinx. Exactly. Further, it for, like, take it further. What does that mean when an individual when whatnot all of a sudden starts associating jinx with it being from a monster jinx becomes the monster jinx turns into chaos if this is labeling towards jinx and this is what it means if this is labeling towards the society of the piltover in the lanes the lanes being like this is the monster that you created to towards the piltover that is true in of itself there is no good or bad in the show but it's all the, literally, the labels and the roles and expectations and masks that we put on one another. Oh, the misery. Exactly. Piltover had the ability to go ahead and help deter this. Help the, the people of the lanes. Did they? Did they? And, and even through this, here's, here's, here's the thing. What do monsters ser serve as? This is just a title, guys. We haven't even touched the show. Mods, you guys are going to have to create some timestamps for this because I already know that people on YouTube are going to greatly appreciate timestamps. What are monsters used for in kids' stories? Ladies and gentlemen? To, to scare people. Fear. Moments of chaos. A common enemy. Whatever. You can unite a nation. You can unite the world under a common enemy. If you make them out to be a big monster. You can unite your friends around against one person. If you make that person out to be a monster. And what does that person have to do now? That person or that thing that you're trying to make. Like that is made this monster. Has a couple of choices. Fight. Bring chaos. Become the monster that they want you to be. Showcase, fuck it. Fuck you, the council. Fuck everyone. You guys wanted this? This is what you're going to get. Flight runs away. I'm not this. I'm going to go ahead and do whatever. Freeze. 
you don't know what to do. Labels thrown on you. You're, you're, you're like, oof, well, where do I go? Fawn. Oh, I, I guess I have to go ahead and play into this in a nice way, whatnot. It's like trying to go ahead and be all lovey-dovey with the idea of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have four different attitudes, four different attack choices in this environment. What do you do if someone labels you like this? In real life, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm a fighter. I, I tend to be very logical in trying to go ahead and tear down the assumptions of being a monster or being labeled a monster. But if that means becoming the monster that they so tell me to become in the process of destroying this, it is what it is. Fuck the monsters. Fuck the council. <laughs> But then this highlights again the story that was being told about exactly about Vi and the, and, uh, the monsters with, with with Jinx when they were kids. They would both grow bigger and bigger, uh, be bigger and bigger monsters, and so they finally wind up scaring themselves. I I do wonder this though. Is it, maybe not in this season, maybe in future seasons. Is Jinx ever going to grow so scared of what she has become? And that's where, where my mind runs into. My mind, my, mind, my mind runs into... Here we go. Fuck it. We're doing this. We're doing this. This is the title. Into this. This is a polyvagal chart. It's a polyvagal theory. Um, otherwise, I think it's Deb Dana. Is it Deb Dana? It was one, one of those individuals. Well, a famous psychologist that came up with the polyvagal theory. Essentially talking about the different reasonings of states, different states that we are in so that we can go ahead and process information, that we can go ahead and act, and how we can act in those states that, that we're in, right? So, for example, someone calls you a monster. Someone says that you're evil. They start... It, and it might happen in, in IRL. It might it might happen in you know just at a, out of a quick response, right? Someone's trying to trigger you. Someone calls you a monster. Someone makes you out to be this big evil thing. What are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you in this? Ventral vagal means safety. It means that we are in, a, in the ability to go ahead and be calm, be grounded, be able to go ahead and make moves to move up our hierarchy of needs, be able to go ahead and be curious, be mindful, be compassionate. Uh, our defense uh, responses are lowered because we don't really need them. Where are we? We're in fight. Fight. What does that do? It's movement forward. That means that we're going to start escalating, escalating up here. Rage, anger, irritation, frustration. You can even see what it looks at the sympathetic nervous system in here. Blood pressure, heart rate, fuel, adrenaline, oxygen, blood clotting, pupil size, dilation of bronchi, defense responses, defense mechanisms start activating. If we're in flight, all of our, if we're, we're literally in fight or flight, this is all being activated. We're about to get in this roller coaster. We're about to take off. Yeah. Yeah. Triggered my fight response. Why is the horizontal axis not labeled? <laughs> showdown there you go but through this th this is this is the aspect that i'm trying to get in someone labels you a monster you're in fight mode how long do you fight before you start you start feeling depressed how long do you fight before you start disassociating or you start feeling shame or maybe you start shutting down we tend to go through these ups and downs in our life we tend, even in little moments, we go through our ups and downs because our nervous system, our ventral vagus nervous system, gets activated from the responses in our environment, from everyday responses, from, oh, you almost hit the car in front of you, you whoop, you know? So let me ask this, right? Let, let's talk about a scenario here. Someone calls you a monster. You fight. You fight against it. You get angry. You're frustrated. You know, you've been nothing but like amazing and down here for a good long time. You thought you've been a wonderful partner, a wonderful friend or whatever. Boom. You find out they're talking crap about you behind your back. And they're like, you know what? You're, you're a monster. You might feel angry at first. You might feel frustrated. You might feel it's time. It is time showdown. You might feel range, uh, rage, irritation, right? 
You, otherwise, you might feel anxiety, panic. Uh, I got to get away from my friends. They don't like me. So worry and concerned that I overdo it. People pleasing, so on and so forth, right? Time starts happening. If this doesn't get resolved right away, if this doesn't die down really quickly, where does it go up? Go up? It goes all the way up to here. Where if th nothing gets solved, you might start shutting down around your friends. You might start shutting down around the people that call you that like a monster. You might start disassociating. You might start feeling numb. You might start feeling helpless. You might start feeling trapped. And all of a sudden, you might go back into this anxiety, worry, and concern and whatnot. And so finally, you're able to go ahead and be back in the, into the ventral vagal system. What I'm trying to highlight through this, yeah, what, what I'm trying to highlight through this, this title, The Monster You Created, is powerful. It's four words. Four words. And it carries so much weight. I'll I'll share this. I, I think I think it's appropriate to share this, right? Which is if you've ever been bullied, if you've ever been in anything, words hurt, words sting, and you carry those words with you for a long time. Words can be literally a theme or a chapter in your life. There are a chapter in some video games, if we're going to be honest, like the labels and the titles that people put on there. Yeah. Oof. Oof. To be honest, I might even question myself if that even happens. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, with that being said, uh, sorry, that was just the title, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't we get into the show? What do you guys think, ladies and gentlemen? Shall we get into the show? Let's go. Guys, drop some Doritos one last time as we as we come into this, because that is a powerful fucking title. And oof. Oof. Man. How long was that explanation of a title? Holy shit. <laughs> okay. How long was the explanation of a title? That's not that, I'm kind of curious. I'm not keeping track of time. I can't see time. But I am kind of curious. Wait a minute. <laughs> Doritos, yes, thank you. Appreciate it. All the self care Doritos. All right. Oh, what's up, Alone Zero? How you doing? Pre Alone Zeri, dude. I appreciate it. Appreciate it a ton. All right, let's go. I'm good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I know. Analyzed over death. I know. Netflix, whatever. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. What I am curious about is what are on, on all the other discs. This one pulls out the specific disc of Vi and Jinx. I'm really, really curious as to all the other discs that are in there. And, and 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 what they what they represent is Netflix going to continue for season two to pick up a disc like this and showcase what what the other ones are. Other Netflix shows. Uh, here we go. Here we go. No, that's that's sort of what I'm thinking. I'm like, because this is a beautiful way of showcasing different events. If this is the fifth one, right? If this was say one, two, three, four, five, it picked it up from five to place it up to start this record playing, to start this collection. I'm really, really fascinated by what the other disc means. Because they could have just made it to like where it picks it up out of like a hollow zone or nowhere. But yet it's showcasing exactly the amount of disc on here. How many characters are in League of Legends, by the way? That's up to studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's up to the studio. That's up to the studio. A hundred plus, like two hundred, a hundred and fifty he heroes in League of Legends. 
Ay, no, yo también. Oh, shit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hold on. How many characters have been introduced here? We have Heimer. We have Jace. We have Victor's one of them, right? Kate. Jinx. Fly. Who else? Heimer, Jace, Victor, Kate, Jinx, Fly. That's six. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, who else is, is our playable characters that we've seen so far? Echo. Seven. Singed. Eight. I have Victor. I have Victor in here. Uh, is Vander a playable character? Is Vander a playable character? Marcus is a playable character? Oh, God. Okay. This list grows. I'm trying to come up with the... No, Vander. No, it's a list of characters that are in League. There's no character named Vander. That is really weirdly named. Ereldion, that is really weirdly, like, uh, <laughs> worded. Marcus is. No preguntes. No way, I'm going to roll attention. No say, uh, Marcus. Okay. Well, wait, Marcus is not. Uh, I, I am. He, pff, rainy, rainy, rain. Dude, I'm like, what the fuck is it? Yeah. I have a theory. I have a theory that more than likely. Some people can theorize, but that's it. I'm really curious. At the end of this episode, can you guys let me know how many people from this show that we've seen? I think like active characters or whatnot, active or main characters or league characters, like actually in the game. Anyway. Oh, great. What a, what a wonderful way to start again. Oh God. Okay. Here we go. We're going in deep. This is interesting. This is, I think this is sort of what, what's beautiful in of its own right. On the one hand, on, you know, on Piltover, you have Victor in front of the hex tech that they create, that like, Jace uses to live, that Jace uses for his gain of popularity. Victor is there with the sh shattered remains uh, of Sky. Down in in the lanes, you have Jace in front of Shimmer, with literally what what represents what might look like in in an essence like the kids. They both killed somebody. They both killed somebody. And in front of the technology that they're so, you know, either trying to get rid of or use or that's helping. And and that's why I'm like, whoa. Whoa. What an amazing, like, way of, like, showcasing two different, two different things happening at once there. What an amazing way of showcasing, like, number one, we have Vic there you know, struggling, trying to get his body back, dealing with grief in his own way. And on the other side, we literally have Jace all of a sudden dealing with the actions of his consequences in front of these as well. Oof. You didn't have a choice. 
he knew what he was signing up for. We're done here. We haven't even scratched the surface. Silk is still out there. Do you not understand? I am part of this now. Yeah. The next parents who get a message their kid isn't coming home. I don't even know where to take it. You might want to protect your girl, Chase. You might want to protect your girl. You might want to protect your girl, dude. Just saying. Just stating. Just stating, brother. You might want to go ahead and look back on in there. Because I do not trust that the Noxians are here without reason of pushing you into that ledge. That's all I got to say. Also, him considering himself a part of this. Yes. Yes. You take this action knowing full well that you're trying to do this to stop an imminent threat. I feel like Jace is, is, is... He starts stepping up for what he believes in, right? He's uh, like, or whatever people make him believe in that he has to go ahead and do. And he starts to go there. And the moment that there are repercussions towards his actions, it's immediately like, no, 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 no. Like trying to backpedal hard. And it's like, so you're learning from it, or this is your defense mechanism that comes out, right? This is a defense mechanism that's coming through again. Chase is in a bad position where he has to learn fast, but every mistake has huge consequences because... Exactly, exactly. But Jace needs to start, like, and, and this is where those boundaries have to come in. Those, those boundaries of, hey, I'm going to do what I want to do, and if it's a mistake, it's my mistake. Because he's, he's literally being like, where's the Nerf Oh, no. I left him in the, I left him in the other one. Uh, let me go get him real quick. Let me go get him real quick. I need Senor Pinguino for this. It's the finale. I need Senor Pinguino for this. I say St. Arping Wino, but a boring baby Cthulhu. Okay. It's baby Cthulhu. <laughs> okay. So it's like if I have baby Cthulhu here, right? Let me lower let me let me lower one of your things. And I'll be here like stop throwing stuff. And and I'm like, you know, yeah, right? Like baby Cthulhu says hi. But I'm like, hey, you know what? I need to go ahead and do this. And maybe Cthulhu says, no, you need to go ahead and start doing certain things. Like you have to do what I tell you to do. This is better for you. This is whatever. If I'm not able to draw my boundaries, what happens? Every single time that you don't draw your boundaries and you don't establish yourself, that line, Senor Pinguino ranked and moted. No, Senor Pinguino is still Senor Pinguino. This is just baby Cthulhu. He's a god. He can't handle being thrown. What happens? In that environment, all of a sudden... That line, my boundary line, if I, if it was here before, starts shrinking. This is the outside influence of the world. This is my boundary line. If I have it out here and I, I let it bulge a significant amount and, and I'm not, I'm like, okay, maybe it was just my, my, my bad. Keeps coming through influencing. Okay. Maybe it's my bad. Maybe it's my bad. This is it. This is my line. How much room does Senor Cthulhu have? All of this. This is all they've traversed. If I try and if I try and push back now, what happens? I, after I've given, it's like an Overwatch. When you give too much space, people try and take advantage of that space. Unless you put firm boundaries and you start pushing back, and it's a big pushback. It is a big pushback that you need to go ahead and do. And for Jace, this is going to be a struggle. This is going to be a battle. How many of you have troubles putting up boundaries? How many of you guys have troubles putting up boundaries? Yeah, but we did all this. What's a little more? Exactly. People use the foot in the door technique too much, which is, oh, but you've done this for me in the past. Oh, thank you so much for this. Can you do a little bit more for me? And, 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 it's, and it can snowball. It can snowball into bigger and bigger portions. 
And, and and that's where it gets terrifying. That's where it genuinely starts getting scary. And that's where everything for me is. I'm like, Jace, you've given up a lot. And I'm glad that you're putting up your boundaries, but you have to be careful because sometimes those boundaries can really hurt. And sometimes, like, let's say that you make up your friendship with Victor and you're like, you know what? I have to assert my boundaries with everyone. You go into the council room and you're like, I'm not going to be pushed back anymore. Are Do you think they're going to accept that? Or are you going to get big pushback? And it's quite literally by doing something like this, does it cause the explosion within the council by doing that? Does it really blow up the entire council, the entire room there? Because all of a sudden you've allowed them, you've allowed this corruption, you've allowed everything, and you're trying to come back in here and lay down the law. What would happen in a society like that? In an environment like that? These are all presupposes, right? Like suppose... But even in your everyday scenario, if you've given other people too much of an advantage, too much of a boundary lenient, right? Uh, if you've given to people too much of a boundary lenient, how hard was it for you to set up your boundaries again? For me, it was pretty difficult. I'm not going to lie. For me, it was uh, someone that I was dating at the time, gave them a little bit too, too much free boundaries and certain things that I wasn't comfortable with. It became really, really hard to reestablish personal boundaries and then relationship boundaries as well. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I'm sure there will be fireworks. Uh, I suck at boundaries until I cut everything off and burn all bridges. That's an avoidance strategy, yeah, right? But if you suck at boundaries, is it all of a sudden that you switch in it? Is it like all of a sudden you're like, you know what, I can't take this, so you just disappear into the night from that friendship and burn all connections, block them, so on and so forth. Is this tipping point for, turning point four? For Jace, it might be. This, this incident might be a, a big turning point, but is it too late is the question. Is doing this already setting off the entire events for what may be war? For what may be quite literally living, leaving a huge weakness, a huge... And it's not even like in terms of like weakness in terms of now the opponent can go ahead and realize that like what you did is the start of war. To like everyone and everything... Oof, Jace is starting to figure out who he is, but is it too late? Is it too late? Do we just leave him here? You've always been a part of this. You just never had to look it in the eye. One dead kid? There's hundreds more where he came from, thanks to Silco and thanks to people like you who stuck their heads in the dirt. Yeah, this is over. Not for me. Take those off. Bruh. Make me. I can't let you leave with them. Then I guess you're gonna need to kill another trencher. And even then... Oh... Even then... Even then. The de-escalation happens. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I feel like Vi is quite literally an agent of change for him. Like, he is probably going to go ahead and use this as a way to bring it up to others, maybe the council, maybe, you know, everyone else, right? Maybe talk to Victor, become friends, as I've said. He might literally go into the council room and try and put up his boundaries, but it might be too late at that point. He's given up too much. And at a point like this, where every single time that he's been confronted head on, what has he done? I am. I am. I'm, I'm fucking terrified. I... I, I I, I, I don't know where this show's going to go, but, like, just realizing the amount of boundary violations that have happened scares me. It scares me because, it, let's say that there's a major accident, a major death. Victor dies, or his lover dies, or whatever. What does that do to him? Jace doesn't negotiate good or bad. Every single time there's been a form of confrontation against Jace... He flies. Whether it was Mommy Noxian at the bathtub where she comes out naked, he tries to flee every single time. Twice. 
He was stopped twice right there. He didn't even haggle. Yeah. Yeah. So that's sort of what I'm getting at is he, I, I don't think he knows how to, how he has to assert himself or maybe he's uncomfortable asserting himself. Also, Sarah, how's your stream? How you doing? I hope you're doing well. He did. So for you guys, and, 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 and this brings up the next question, the, the next line of questioning. How comfortable are you guys ha haggling? How comfortable are you guys in confrontation? Are you comfortable being uncomfortable? Are you comfortable quite literally calling out like another person or another person calling you out? How do you deal with that? Confrontation is healthy, right? I have no shame. There is confrontation is healthy. Do not get me wrong. A rupture and repair process in almost any line of work is healthy. It happens. It is what it is. But, and here's my big butt in this, my big nalgas. The only thing that you can control are your emotions. And if you get triggered off of confrontations, ask why. What triggers you about a confrontation period? Is it the unknown that may come from it? Is it that you don't know what they're confronting you? And so on and so forth. Because looking at this, I'm like, Jace has just given in. Has just, you know, walked away. Has tried to go ahead and walk away from other situations. Time and time again. You won't make it alone. Question, question, question. We saw all the other creepy monsters being enabled by this. Literally being engulfed, at least like all this shimmer. Is this housing anything inside of it that's not shimmer? Because if it is, I'm fucking terrified. And I know I say that a lot, but quite literally... It's episode nine. What are they going to tell with this story? Okay. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> I was expecting like a big, like, you know, a monster coming out of it. Like, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> oof, oof, oof. Oh, uh, yeah. Eve. Powerful stuff, honestly. And 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 even looking at Vi, right? Let, we're we're gonna flip the perspective now. We're flipping the perspective. In psychology, this is also uh, an attachment and narrative technique of being able to go ahead and flip the perspective to the other individual. It's a uh, third person rationalization as to being able to go ahead and understand the other characters in the situation or the environment present. This is often done as a way to go ahead and contextualize that there is neither good or bad, but just different perspectives, different elements being present there. That's exactly why we're doing this. You didn't have a choice. He knew what he was signing up for. That line scares me from Vi. That line terrifies me from Vi. Because would she have said the same thing when they were younger and they were stealing from Piltover? He didn't have a choice. He knew what he was getting into. I know she's trying to empathize and she's trying to convince, but taking that perspective and flipping it around, that copium, the way she says it, it's cope. It is. But that's what I'm saying. Like, e even trying to empathize and trying to go ahead and get him to, like, you start moving on, you start advancing from that. 
this is hard. This is something that like saying it is not easy. Admitting it is not easy. And she and that's the thing is how far are, are you willing to go to convince someone to go for your cause, to do what needs to be done in that environment. We're done here. We haven't even scratched the surface. Silco's still out there. And then the next line of question becomes, if you were in Jace's shoes, would you follow Vi or not? You can tell when, when she says that that line, she doesn't believe it herself. I mean, what else would you expect? It's how the world would have treated them as a kid. It wasn't a matter of having a choice. It was a matter of skill issue. Hell no. Knox says, hell no, I wouldn't follow Vi. Why not? She's unbalanced. Are you talking about in game or like in, as a person? She's out for vengeance and justice. Mm. Mm. She might be. She might be. I like this wheel better. Hold on. Ah, we can use this one. This one's fine. We'll use both. We're using two wheels of power and control. Here's the first wheel of power and control. Oh, I have Wild Rift on my phone. I, I just need people to play it with. Yeah, I have Wild Rift on my phone, so I just need people to play it with. So when it comes to when it comes to Vi, let's talk about this. Have people used physical violence on her? Yeah. Have people called her names? Yeah. Have people used her social standing against her? The council. Have people used technology against her? Yeah. Hextech. Let's be honest. At first, Hextech was a, was a big thing, right? And so on and so forth. Have people tried to use intimidation on her? Yeah. As far as I've seen, people have tried to intimidate her. Have people tried to minimize, deny, or blame her in certain situations? Yeah. We can look at all the scenarios that have been happening around this entire arc for Vi in herself. And we can even go into Jace as well. Have people made threats to her? Threatening to leave, hurt them, and so on and so forth. Have people tried any form of harassment or assault? Have people excluded her? That social isolation, the, you know, isolating someone from their friends or family. Yeah. So in a big moment, if you look at this, a majority of this ticks off. Where is Vi's power and control? Even if it touches lightly on, it's still a check mark. It's still a check mark. You know? And 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 this is this is the more simplified version. This is using male privilege, but it's really just privilege in general. So, i.e., the privilege of Piltover. Yes, uh, any form of abuse that they have to go ahead and do, you know, do one hundred and one things to try and survive. Uh, children using children, deny, blame, isolating, so on and so forth. These are all by the National Center. I think of it, it was like domestic abuse. Hundreds of psychology articles on it being able to go ahead and identify where our circles of power and control lie. So let me go ahead and throw this out here. We've noted that she at least has a yes in aspects like this, right? We at least know that there is that there is a yes in aspects like this. Doesn't have to be all of them, but at least a majority of them. So does she have power of her environment? Probably not. Does she have power? Does she feel like she have power over herself? Honestly, it's hard. Because what happens in a situation where, say, all of a sudden, I've taken your power away. And you see a, a, like a friend, a sibling in distress. You don't have all these powers, all these tools that most people start at a baseline. You're under that. You ever heard, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reference it to this as a way for you guys to get an image as to what, my, what this might look like. Of learned helplessness. 
Have you guys ever heard of learned helplessness or what, or do you guys know what that means? In situations like this, at times when our power is taken from us, we try and do everything we can to try and get that power back. I'm, I'll go into what learned helplessness means in a little bit and to try and get that back. So at times we make desperate attempts, don't matter. I, we talk about how trauma affects everyone and how sometimes trauma is like g getting a, a, a red paint, putting it on your hands and everyone and everything that you meet, you you put a little bit of that red paint on them because you're not fully healed and you're doing, some people get more of that red paint on them. Other people just get little sprinkles as you're trying to move through. When you don't have power and control in your life, you can't start healing from this trauma. So what you're doing is you don't care if it hurts people. You are going to do what needs to be done for you to feel a little bit more of that control in you. Who has, what re would restore a semblance of that power and control for her? Probably Jinx. Probably dealing with that situation. Probably understanding that maybe Jinx is, or Powder is safe. If we're being real, that is probably what that would entail. That is probably what that would go for, that would search for. I know I would. So going through with that, can I blame Vi for the actions that she's taking so drastically and so radically? No, I can't. Because this is what behavior looks like when someone takes your power and control away from you. This is what behavior looks like when you don't feel like you have time to sit and wait and think. Because if you do, people will use this against you. So you just have to keep moving. Terrifying. Terrifying. This is why, as, as we're going through this, and I'm repeating those words. Oh, God, this is probably really, really bad. The words we use matter. And the words that we're using to express our narrative and our story are important. From our base to our more exquisite words, think about this as a reverse hierarchy of needs, right? Happy, surprised, bad, fearful, angry, sad, whatever. Baseline needs, as we go further and further up, we start getting into more creative areas. How does Vi talk? Is Vi's language sophisticated? Yeah, to that adds up. There's a whole lot of people out here who... Exactly, exactly. So this is what I'm highlighting. We have an individual who's at a baseline of needs, who's trying to understand their environment, who's pushing through to try and gain some sort of aspect of control in her life, in her narrative, over what safety is, over finding what home is again, over all of these things. And yet every single time she tries, she gets told no. No by society. No by the council. Maybe yes by Jace at first and then a no. No by Kate. No by all these people just saying no, even though Kate was like, I'll be there for you. We'll fix this. For her, does she have time to conceptualize this? No. Let's flip it to Jace. Well, we're, we're all, we're, we'll flip it to Jace at the end here. Hold on. I'm not sure for you guys, but for me, that blows my mind a little bit. That actually blows my mind a lot because this is solidifying Vi as in, as more than just an individual that's like, oh, I can't understand why she's acting the way she's acting. It's like she's acting this way because she doesn't have this power. She's acting this way because she doesn't hasn't she doesn't have her Maslow's hierarchy of needs met. She doesn't have this met. What does she have? Where is she at? Realistically, where is she at in here? Where is she at? And chat goes quiet. Yeah, dudes. Yeah. Literally at the bottom. If we're, if we're going to be real. Does she have a shelter to live in? A place to call home? Does she have a place where she can get food, water, sleep? Is her breathing okay? She's down here. And we expect her to be over here self-actualizing. A lot of people expect her to already be problem-solving and doing all of these wonderful things. She's down here.
She can go there, but is that a home for her? Does she feel like that's a home for her? And even through that, in comes next. Is she secure in her resources and family that would still put her down in safety? You can still get areas up above. You can have friendships up here while being down here. You can have self-esteem. You can have you can have little bits and pieces up here. But if we're talking about where a majority of her of her Maslow's hierarchy of needs is is like like you know a little torn at, it's down here. She's at the bottom, and she she's in a rough state. So now we know she's at the bottom of this one. She's quite literally lacking power and control. Uh, words wise, we we can already tell that she's she's struggling. So then, what is she doing? We are going through a full circle just for Vi because this is an important beat. This is an important story. This is this is a story like, and I want to conceptualize Vi for this because Vi doesn't get enough love. Vi in this whole scenario and the way why she's acting and how she's acting so rash needs to make sense. Cupcake Kate wants to go ahead and be that emotional support, but she like necessarily does she meet the needs that uh, Vi wants? Okay, where is Vi on this? Where is Vi on this? I'm going to be honest with you guys. And taking. She's trying to take actions now. She's trying to go ahead and take as many actions as it. There's, there is things, for example, war being one of the biggest ones here, right? Where is Jace in this? I didn't get much into those. Yep, 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 yep. These are what 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 is normal within the like our consensual self and interactions in society, and what is not. Our good self, our 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 self that is in the light, and our self that is in the dark, often reflected by the intro that we see. Shadow allow, allow others. The shadow side tolerates, endures, is a pushover, is a victim, is a doormat, is passive. Mm. Can can Vi be over here in the rescuer role? Yes, I will save her. Yes, I will do this. Or is she in the take role? I want to question you guys. I want I want to go ahead and get your thoughts on this. Is she in the shadow side of the serving role, or is she in the shadow side of the taking role? Shadow allow. Thank you, Noct. Exactly. So for Jace, it's, sh it's sh shadow allow. It can also be a bit of shadow accept. If we're going to be realistic. So. Can Vi be a bit on the shadow side of serving? Be a do-gooder, a rescuer, in, in their own mind, by the way. Trying to rescue people, a martyr, and so on. Jinx, she's in the shadow serve. Yeah. There you go. Knocked. You got it, man. That's a fucking golden star for you. And that is what I want to go ahead and highlight. I want to highlight these characters. I want to go ahead and, and, and talk about these characters. Because this is why they're acting in this way. For for Vi, these gloves are her, are her agents of change. These gloves are what she can change her environment with. Or what's allowing her to fight back. So Do look. you not understand? I am part of this now. The next parents who get a message their kid isn't coming home. I don't even know where to take it. Do we just leave him here? You've always been a part of this. You just never had to look it in the eye. One dead kid? There's hundreds more where he came from, thanks to Silco and thanks to people like you who stuck their heads in the dirt. Yeah. This is over. Not for me. Take those off. Bora. I can't let you leave with them. Then I guess you're going to need to kill another trencher. 
I like how she was empathizing with them first and then uses it to jab. For Vi, he became a threat. So the empathetic nature goes away. So you're going to have to kill another trencher. Trenter. Like, whoa. Whoa. The words out of my head. and Right? Anders, like, knocked, knocked, fucking knocked it out of the park with that. Knocked it, did really, really well with that. <laughs> but that's sort of what, what I'm trying to highlight here is, like, first off, if I was an enforcer, I'd be shitting my pants right now. I'd be like, ooh, I ain't getting in this. But also, she's not going to give up those gloves. She's finally a being able to do something about it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not from what we've seen so far. It kind of worries me that how Vi escalates life or death immediately. Well, but not. You have to remember, she's at the base period. This is life or death. She's at the. She's at like the bottom of almost every period that we've seen. No power and control. You know, if we're looking at the like uh, the uh, polyvagal theory, we're seeing that she's like automatically going into fight mode. What all of that's doing? It is like there's no in between for her at this moment in time because she probably doesn't have the coping skills in her mind to be able to go ahead and like. Or even, like, self-regulating skills to be able to go ahead and process that. Yeah. The poverty and suffering downside was created by Soko. Oof. Mini Alucard coming in here with the... <laughs> you won't make it alone. She's willing to... Yeah. But think about it, not. It happened again with Kate. There was one major uh, fallout, disagreement in the previous episode. One major, you know, the council did not agree with them. The council, whatever. And she cut connections and she flew. Fight or flight. That's where she's at. If you're not, if things are not aligning with her views or with whatever the situation may be, it's fight or flight for her. And that's where it gets scary. Vi's. Uh, Vi's likely going back to prison. Kate got her under false pretenses and Jace knows it. I do wonder about this scene in particular, if this is being reflected to... Because I remember in episode one... Hold on. It's going to be in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Damn. Yeah, powder's even glitching in here. She's so cute. Forgot how cute she was. I wonder if in a way... The red hair... The short red hair that's coming through from that. It doesn't have to be by much, but it is interesting. 
We'll, we'll, we'll look at the bodies. Hold on. It is interesting for me. So what I'm getting at specifically through this, yeah, is even looking at a reflection of this, right? In in a, like they could have chosen any other hair color, any other thing for this character that died, for this young character that died. But yet they chose someone, it's a very similar hairstyle in terms of like uh, the first episode that we saw. Oof. Oof. The the symbolism through that huge. The, the imagine, yeah. The directors could have the directors could have chosen any other hairstyle, blue, black, uh, orange, whatever. But it's all like and, and that's that's sort of what what I'm highlighting through this is like even through the, the reflections of our, of ourselves that we see in others. Like it symbolism, yeah, that the old old vi is gone, yeah, yeah. That's why that speaks out to me, and even going back and hearing Powder like you know saying to try and calm herself down and the scary monsters and all of that, like oof. Yeah, this is. <laughs> Let's go. That I analyze. <laughs> Stopping. There was too much that popped up this time. Okay. Something that's popping up for me. Presses X to doubt. I know, I know. Something that pops up to me is the aspect of legacy. And I know we've talked about this in the previous episode. But through this as well, in trauma... As young kids, as we've seen, p people will literally go over on Piltover and, uh, or not Piltover, but quite, no, no stopping two seconds past. Fuck. <laughs> Welcome to the Psychultrist channel, guys, where we literally analyze as much as we can and talk about as much as we can, right? But one of, one of the big things that pops out to me is what can, what does trauma do to you, right? How does trauma impact childhood? And even if you're in the light in one set like section, right? So that you're filled with doing whatever you need to do, being the shield, being the protector of others. And then in the darkness, while the other person's in the light, having to deal with that trauma in of itself. That's a big moment altogether. Like how trauma changes us. I've always felt like Vi side on the beginning of the show. Oh, yeah. I said, I mean, she was his vice view of powder, like a rock weighing her down. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd agree with you, Alucard. It, it, it really is like, even like that, or like her standing herself out in outside of the rock or outside of a shield. And uh, through this rock, through this whatever, through this weight, powder is formed. But we also have to talk about the weight of this trauma, which is this opening. Now, if this is Vi's 
and Powder's parents. Do you think she maybe has a type? I, 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 I'm just throwing this out there, you know, seeing the fact that her mom had what looks like blue hair. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get all psychoanalytical about it. I'm just saying, you know, some similarity through something that sticks out through it. Uh, asking for a friend here, right? Asking for a friend. But this, Vi, at a young age, at a very young age, if we're looking at this at, at, at episode one and in reference to the finale in this opening analysis, what does this show? For Powder, who's too young, who might be way too young to contextualize the meaning of her parents' passing, what has Vi just become? What has Vi just become at this point in time? Her caregiver. Mom. Unknowingly. That might be my sister, but that's still mom. She takes care of me. You know, she yells at me, which is where this desperation comes from. And it makes more and more sense going forward. How she reacts this way. Why she reacts certain things. And all of a sudden... The want for attention, the want for be there, the jealousy aspects, the the mine aspects, like uh if we're to be honest, like mine, <laughs> like you know, like that type of, of, of environment and sustainability through this because of the trauma, the joint trauma that came through this. This is like here's the thing. People can trauma bond through events, through sharing stories, through uh, of trauma, through hundred and one aspects through this. As kids we are looking for something that can sustain our cycle of hope, belief, our Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So we're looking at this, and we see that in episode one, all the death and whatnot. Powder clings onto her like no tomorrow. She's been singing a little bit to try and like sustain her mind from all the action fighting and whatnot that's been happening. What elicits the biggest reaction? This, this plays into the opening in episode 9. I hope. I, I really hope he didn't die. Powder is seeing this. But what does Powder react to? Watch. Powder does not react to what's in front of her to contextualize this is dead. You know, my parents are dead. This is what's happening. No, she reacts to Vi breaking down. When Vi breaks down, Vi is crying. This is something that I can contextualize. This is something in the in the here and now. This is my caregiver that's crying. Why, why are you crying? You know, and you, you, like you, so on and so forth. It's those reactions that start coming through. Those very natural reactions. So e even using this as a semblance for, for what's going forward, right? For their connection, for the fact that they that they are together. They're not just siblings, like they're family, they're so on and so forth. Huge, man. Huge. And also why it hurts Vi so much to be excluded. Why it hurts Vi when... Uh, or not Vi, Powder, to be excluded. Why it hurts Powder when Vi called her all of those things. Feels like Vi and Powder's primary care, even when mom and dad... Yeah, yeah. Probably shut off the rest of the world due to trauma and hyper-focused on Vi. Yeah. 
at that point, it could have been a coping mechanism, a defense mechanism, anything we want to call it, right? To survive the cruel environment that they were in. But Vi became her mom. Or Powder, became Powder's mom uh, in a, like, distant way. It's like, it's still your sister, but it's your caregiver, you know? This is what I find interesting. For all the other characters Jar already made, but for Victor, he has to make himself. Victor and I think Jinx are the two characters that have to make themselves, right? Like Jinx comes out of out of, out of or Powder comes out of Vi's back. himself as well that is so interesting like this blows uh, like looking at it now from like the very beginning it, it's kind of awesome it, it, it really is having the book backwards looking for a diff an alternative version that's not necessarily what's written in the text and you know making yourself from that beautiful stuff her upholding her literally upholding her ethics in stone if we're going to be realistic about it, that's all she's done uh, this season is trying to go ahead and be the search for good, be an actual cop, detective. We have Heimerdinger, <laughs> Daddy Heimer. All right. Run wild between so many characters. They really do. They really do. And the council. I like I know that we've gone over a thousand and one times, literally at least nine times this opening. And every time there's been new things to pick at, I'm going to miss doing this. And I love just love doing opening analysis. Yeah, this is nine times now because it, it's quite literally like you can always find something new in the data being provided. It's wonderful. I, I'm blown away time and time again. And for Arcane for being able to go ahead and do that. Oof. It's been a while since Topside's gotten this bold. Say what you want about the late sheriff. He had his uses. Too bad Jinx didn't think so. We'll <laughs> buy another. You gotta do anything about that piece of shit that murdered my boy. Let me guess. Jinx oh shit. Take care of it. Oh shit. Oh shit. Why was your boy working in this factory? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you like an underground council member or something? Working in the factory is a privilege. Oh, I didn't know that. Holy shit. Okay. But still. Whoa. Whoa. That just struck war. <laughs> She's been taking care of everything else. We all mourn the loss of your son, Rene. At least we have the solace of knowing he died fighting for our cause. Instead of some petty personal dispute. As so often occurs here. Ooh. You're one to talk about sacrificing for the cause. Where is Jinx anyhow? Help her with the body. So Jinx...
Pour powder, dude. She just doesn't fucking... Poor Jinx, dude. She just doesn't have it, like, anything. She gets hate because she does. She gets hate because she doesn't. Like, that's... That hurts. Imagine being in that place, right, where you try and be social. Nobody wants you. And you try and be with your family. And your family doesn't want you. She has no support network. Somehow this is Jinx's fault. Somehow she's still being made out to be a monster. Even though she had nothing to do with this. What would that do to you as an individual? If you are the black sheep and if you experience this, what does that do to you? How do you feel about this when people do this to you? She's taking a jab, but the thing is, words matter, dude. Because these narratives get stuck in people's heads. And, oh, Jinx this, Jinx that. Jinx might literally need to go ahead and destroy the lanes. Might need to go and destroy Piltover. Might need to be this agent of change for everyone at this point. Like, I don't belong. I don't have a place here with these people. Exactly. Because where do you belong? How would you fit in? How would you build that support network if nobody wants you around them? I, I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at, at the fact that, like, these support networks that are supposed to be there for you and love you and support you and help lift you up. And even, like, you can have, you can have discourse. But the fact that you're blaming someone that isn't even there highlights the fact that, yes, it is a jab at Silco. But at the same time, you already have an image of who Jinx is. And you've already labeled them as a monster. Yep. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, Vic. Victor, I know this will probably never see the light of day. But watching how you work so tirelessly to make the world a better place, well, I couldn't forgive myself if I didn't try. Everyone's going to part, right? Emotional fucking de oh. Before he chucks that. I am surprised that no one has come running. I, I am surprised. Like at hearing. Maybe even the screams. Or you know the pain. Or yelling for Victor. Or the loud noise. Like no one has tried to come and check. Maybe the halls are so big that no one can really hear. But that's. If the halls are so big that no one can be around you. That no one can hear that. Oof. Like what does that do? You you honestly are, are isolated in in this whole environment in and of itself. It's also nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'm highlighting this because it's. It might be after hours. But that's like looking at this and hearing stuff like this. I'm like. For a person's mind, a person's safety or whatnot. After experiencing any form of major trauma, like, or witnessing any, any death or whatnot, like, usually there's a crisis line that is called to help the individual process and be able to go and cope. Otherwise, rash decisions are made, and often it makes the situation worse. Or, you know, if we're going to be real, some trigger warning stuff can skyrocket as well, which is ideations and symptoms like that. Victor is dealing with a lot. Victor is quite literally... Oof, Man, I, 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 it hurts. It hurts. Oh, 
en jou. Oh, bro, fuck that. Fuck that, bro. <laughs> it gave you a shock for trying to hurt it? Fuck that, brother. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. It's Madge. It's Madge. Noxian wine is bold by comparison. The grapes are hardened by the climate, but then... So is everything that manages to survive in Noxus. Okay, if you were the guard, I'm, 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 I'm asking you as the individual that you are now. If you were this guard and you had to witness this, including, uh, say, sexy time, how uncomfortable would you be? <laughs> like you as the individual that you are now, right? Say that someone hired you to be their personal bodyguard and like, you know. It should have been me. He has seen it all before. Oh, ZMW. <laughs> Oof. Mel, would you like leave? Damn, that kid looked offended. That kid looked like this is my new supreme shirt, Mel. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh no that could look like something else depends on how good the pay is stay away from jace i love that she's stepping up i i really do i love that she's trying to set boundaries for J for her relationship i guess but jace needs to set those boundaries honey like jace needs to be the one that's able to go ahead and set these up for her. you really are fond of him better yet march back to your ship and get the hell out of my city Get hold of yourself. I taught you better. She in trouble, Mel. The man who killed your brother doesn't believe the score is settled. And his resources exceed ours. If there is a chance Hextech can be weaponized, we must have it. Mel, you want me to give you a warning sign? Run! Corre! Get the fuck out of there, please! Get the near... I... I, I... Mira, senora. Mira. I, I will go over there with you, you know? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show you some of my my people's ways of getting out of sticky situations. <laughs> you need to get out of there. Like, I, I don't know how else to put it, but Hextech, you, Hextech, you. I don't know what she's planning. I don't. I fear for it though. Because I fear for an all-out war for this technology. Because time and time again, it's been proven. However, what can get Jace to give that technology up? Harming her. Any form of harm that happens to this, I feel like the Noxians uh, can go ahead and step in. Any form of harm that happens to anyone that Jace loves will be like an open-door invitation to start this war. Unless Jace knows how to put up his boundaries. This is... Oof. Oof, but it'd be more worried about the people I'm guarding her from. Yeah. Piltover isn't your testing ground. I've only accelerated the process you started. I wanted to protect the city from people like you. I can't believe you'd start a war just to cover your ass. I would set the world ablaze to protect our family. No, <laughs> I stopped being part of this family the moment you cast me out. Why? Why did you do it? Because you weakened me. I couldn't endure the look in your eyes whenever I made the decisions, the necessary decisions to keep us safe. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. We need that weapon, Mel. Let I love how a faction of what may be truth came out. 
how a faction of like how Mel actually changed her came out in that conversation. However, I also question, is this manipulative? Is this a way of using, because some parents do this. Some parents use uh, some knowledge, uh, not, not all parents, but some parents of like quite literally sort of like guilt tripping. You're, you're making me human. You, you made me do this. We need this. You made me do this. It could be both true and manipulative. Absolutely. Because that could have been phrased any other way. But for her and her character and how she represents his power and all of this thing, she's just not going to go ahead and give away that so easily. And this is, yeah, this is the first time that she's really shown, like, th these emotions. Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss, let's go. <laughs> no! The war unfold. And you come home, take your place at my side. It's where you belong. Jeez. I like how for for Mel, right? And and this would be a question that I would have for her as like a therapist or psychologist for her. Where does she feel she belongs? Because with the Noxians, they gave her away. And her using the words where you belong. Oof. 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 Any sign of weakness is a death sentence. That's why I'm like, hearing this, I'm like, where does she belong? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know where you'd have preferred. Big. I'm sorry. Big. Oh. Oh. Brother, he was about to take a step off, brother. Bro, the void is calling. Actually, let's. Let, I I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> the parallels, yeah. Heimerdinger did this once. Now, yeah. But let's talk about this, right? Do you guys know what the call of the void is? Call of the Void are usually these interrupted thoughts, not interrupted thoughts, intrusive thoughts uh, that pop in from time to time um, that can be anything from like, I wonder what would happen if I walked into traffic right now. I wonder what would happen if I stopped waking up or if I just didn't wake up today. I, like it, It's quite literally sometimes, if, especially if you've experienced deep trauma, depression, other aspects you don't even have to experience that to get calls of the void right not necessarily um trigger warning ideation right or suicidal ideation or suicidal whatever it, it could literally just be a random intrusive thought that may pop up and be like what would happen if you drove onto incoming traffic or anything like that but which please by the way do go check in with the with the professional in your area if these thoughts do start appearing because it is a sign that something is wrong it is a sign that something, you know, maybe anxiety, might be depression, might be who knows what, needs to be addressed. For Victor, though, seeing this and seeing the fact that he was about to take a step forward, have his efforts actually brought results? Or are they just gone? He's back with this cane. He's like, even though he has a leg there, did the thing shock him to no longer be able to use it? Did it take that power away? And if so, are you now a slave of that blood, blood hex core? What? It's not normal? <laughs> hmm. 
remember the Distinguished Innovators competition? I remember you notching gears in the carriage over. They started cranking the engine and the whole thing was rattling. I thought a loose <laughs> cog was gonna take someone's eye out. Well, at least you didn't throw up. Everything made sense then. You have to destroy it. I know. The hex core. I... I can't do it. You have to. Please. Oh, shit. What about your disease? Without the hex core? <coughs> Honestly, that's that's yeah, that fucking hits, dude. I, I'm, I'm like on the verge of tearing up. That hits. Oh shit! <laughs> I did not. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> like I, I'm gonna be straight up about this, which is. Oftentimes, we lose our way as we grow. We lose our pursuit as to what we're truly passionate about, what our dreams truly meant. And it can be terrifying. And at the same time, it can be sad to look back upon and see where what your dream originally was to where you are today, and so on and so forth. And for example, I'll open up about this as a reference towards something similar, right? Like, doing this channel, doing these analysis, doing these streams and whatnot, um, my number one thing has always been to go ahead and spread mental health content out there. I've shared this before, and it's a story that I love sharing and love talking about because it's, it's vital, and it's going to be more vital, especially as I do more and more research in the field uh, about this, which is how anime from a very young age saved my life. If, if I'm being honest, it was a way to cope. It was a way to de-stress. It was a way to talk with your friends and socialize. It was a way to go ahead and like, you know, experience emotions and be able to go ahead and understand deeper concepts and themes and uh, do so many things. So when I first started doing stuff like this, the amount of negativity that popped out from it, right? Because my, my main thing was making mental health care accessible for anyone, anyone out there that, that truly enjoys anime, shows, cartoons, media in general, and culture. The amount of ridicule, the amount of pushback from friends, from professionals, from others saying you should only stick to these interventions. Telehealth won't take off. Look at what, telehealth, what happens to telehealth. Uh, people don't care about long-form analysis on shows like that. You know, people won't care about this. People will care more about books or about uh, them talking about so on and so forth. And honestly, getting the door shut in my face, it hurt. It really, really hurt. You guys can look back, and I, I highlight this usually in every series that I talk about. But in the first couple of videos that, that I did, that I uploaded, I think it was like ReZero Episode 1. Look at the camera quality. Look at the uh, like audio quality. I, I wish I still had the computer, the laptop. It's a shitty laptop. It, 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 it is a laptop that was breaking down on me in a time and point where I mentioned before... I was running out of cash. I was running out of food. I was running out of everything because COVID had hit. My support networks were down. Everything was at a low, low point. And yet for me, what kept me going was this dream. And it still is a dream of mine. That like people can thrive off of or learn something from this and grow from it. And grow from the stories that are being told. My, my dream is like, even if it changes one person's life in a good manner, 
that for me a day or throughout whatever it is a mission accomplished and that's that speaks volumes like shows like these speak volumes for me because of it and looking back now and like even looking at, at me as I was back then I could never envision being here now I could never envision how much we've grown and thank you yeah from from the bottom of my heart thank you guys Thank you guys for being open to it. There's been criticisms along the way. There, there, there will always be, no matter what. But I, I really like thank you for being a part of this and being a part of this journey and helping spread that mental health is important and analyzing stuff is important and all of this. I can't. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Big Dumbs, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I love y'all. I really, really genuinely do. And even if I don't know you, I, I appreciate you being here. And even if you disagree with anything that I do, I, it's okay, dude. I still love you too. And I hope that you guys do well. And you guys dream big and keep doing what needs to be done. Because fuck, dude. Fuck. Anyway. <laughs> we have to make it right. I'm busy. So go. When you took Vander out of play, I thought now here's the man who understands what Thanks, it takes dude. to run an enterprise. The attitude, the instinct, the eye. The whole package, you were. Oh. You really think you have it, Cyberpunk 2020, 2077, uh, mid tier character? <laughs> Dude, Silco's at least very, very smooth about the way he operates and isn't just trying to go out and plot like, like a snake around them. Like, my, my dude comes in here like, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I have some choice words for him immediately. But still, Silco does not react. Silco is ter definitely not even scared of him. Just look at him, dude. Hold on. Look at this. Silco's not going into an immediate defensive position, reactive position, nothing. 1877. <laughs> when you took Vander out of play, I thought now here's the man who understands what it takes to run an enterprise. The attitude, the instinct, the eye. The whole package, you were always two steps ahead. But times lapped you, old man. You with him, are you? You screwed up, Silco. Okay, bro. You're too young to remember what the Undercity was before it became an enterprise. We had nothing. You know what bore us through those times? Loyalty. Brothers and sisters back to back against whatever the world threw at us. Now I... You... They're fucked. They're fucked. Not Silco. Them. Silco is way too cool about this. In an environment where he knows that he might be at a disadvantage. He's way too cool and calculated and probably knows. I'm guessing Jinx is probably in this room and is probably going to come on down and, and, and kick their ass, if I'm being honest with you. Like, th this is like, Silco is not, not, not just a man that's going to let things happen. Like, this is. Mm, mm, I have some choice words against them. I'm forced to share the air with parasites like you who leech off their legacies. Today's the day you die. Silco. Oh. That's a risk I've known all my life. But I still believe in loyalty. Oh, fuck. I thought it was going to be Jinx. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey. That speech, bro. Natural D20. Critical success. Here we go, bro. Holy crap. <laughs> Oh, 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 that was amazing. Mm. 
blaming Jinx for Silco's confidence, but she's not even there. <laughs> oh, that was really, really well done. Dusted off the chair for fit and positioned it carefully. Yeah, yeah, she knew exactly where she needed to strike. your son killed for this though i suppose we're ahead on that account silco did not have to do that dirty holy fuck wait a bit <laughs> silco did not hold mm. <laughs> that's some evil edge shit bro that is just straight up like mm. you want to meet your son oof <laughs> that's so fucked i i love soko i yeah he's he's cold and he's still retaining his power that's uh oof maximum threat minimum effort get out were you tempted not for a worm like him but he won't be the last. Oh, fuck, he knows. Oh. Oh, man. My heart rate is like going all over the place for this that is what a powerful powerful scene in this and just in terms of the power dynamics for her to still have this loyalty towards silko honestly i think the only person that can take down silko is silko or jinx the reason that i'm saying this is because silko at the moment is more than just silko he's an idea Silco's promise and what he's changed is no longer just the fact that he's a man there, but he's an idea as to what the lanes have turned into. To kill off Silco, you need to kill off the lanes. You need to change the lanes. You need to change Piltover. You literally need to change the entire environment by doing anything, being quite literally the big nuclear bomb that changes everyone and everything around you. Because Silco's influence is, is, is more than just, you know, him running Shimmer or him having this group of banditi that go around and do stuff. I think she's loyal to him because not because of Silco, not for. Yeah. Only when the idea of the nation of Son dies. Which, yeah. Which, which, which is why I'm like, oof. Dusting off the chair position makes it pretty clear to me that Sophika was planning to just kill Finn from the beginning. Well, I mean, what does she even do this for Silco? Unless it's like a big environmental thing. We haven't seen her go to this level level of like cleaning off or whatnot. She lights a cigar, yeah, cool, whatever. But dusting off a person's seat. There you die, Silco. That's a risk I've known all my life. And that positioning as well. That positioning as well is beautiful. Yeah, that positioning as well is beautiful. Because now he, he has left himself open instead of choosing whatever whatever he wanted to guard himself. Look at his eyes real quick. Hold on. His eyes. He looks down. He darts up. She's been there for enough time to look down and look at the seal. Bro. Bro. 
I think Silco might have been sending a message as well. <laughs> yep. I think Silco might have been sending a message as well through this. That is so beautifully like Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That is like legitimately he has so much to lose right now and he has to count on her seeing that. But he does it in such a way that, like, yeah, he's not going to stop and won't need to die. I don't know. It could be. When you took Vander out of play, I thought, now here's the man who, are... who animated something like that. Honestly, yes. Yes. Understands what it takes to run an enterprise. The attitude, the instinct, the eye, the whole package you were always two steps ahead. But times lapped you, old man. You with him, are you? So what happens? What happens if Soko cleans house? Why does he not clean house? People are always giving him shit because of the eye. Yeah, guys, but I I'm going to be straight up. What happens if he doesn't clean house? Like, if he... If he decided to go around and just take out everyone in a position of power to implement others in positions of powers, what would that do? And why doesn't he do that? Let's talk about that for a second. He doesn't plan on sticking around after he wins. He wasn't sure if it works, even though he knows what Civic is loyal to. Everyone betrays us. I'm going to be honest. That power vacuum. Power vacuums destroy people. As we've clearly seen... Like, power vacuums in, in, a, in a society like this, even if he implements people back in there, there's going to be distrust. Because say that they're ruling a company, ruling whatever, he puts whatever people he wants to put in there, and all of a sudden, there are, there's definitely more scheming happening behind the scenes. It gets a lot harder for him to control. He is just focused on succeeding in the parlay. You screwed up, Silco. <laughs> It's inclined with the base stakes. <laughs> You're too young to remember what the Undercity was before it became an enterprise. We had nothing. You know what bore us through those times? Mm. Loyalty. Mm. Brothers and sisters back to back against whatever the world threw at us. Now I'm forced to share the air with parasites like you. Who lead... What I find funny is... Mr. Cyberpunk 2077 here, burning the wood as though he has Silco up against the wall. Like, even like the disrespect that is still coming through. Oh, Cisco. You doing okay, dude? Drives the curtain people. In the yeah, he can, exactly. But it, it would take him a while, though, and I think that's, that's a big point through that. Loyalty. Brothers and sisters back to back against whatever the world threw at us. Now I'm forced to share the air with parasites Oof. like you, who leech off their legacies. Today is the day you die, Silco. That's a risk I've known all my life. But I still believe in loyalty. That's nasty. That's nasty. That is that is <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't get them too though. Like I'm surprised it only got him and not her. Considering the spread. Also, Cisco, yeah, my mom. Oh, Cisco. I hope you know, man. We like I we love you and we support you here, man. And no, no matter what, like I sometimes you know, coming out or sometimes being found out can be a little tough because uh, family doesn't always accept. But like here in this community, you're always more than accepted, man. And nothing but love and hugs and support, brother, because like, yeah, it, it, it can be tough, man. It can, it can really, really be tough. And I can't even imagine all the feelings that you must have been dealing with this week, dude. Oof. It went through gold? Oof. Oof. 
Uf. Uf. <laughs> what is Savika's knife made of? Totally ruined this glass. Good thing he finished drinking. The blade is fancy, fancy. That blade is made out of diamonds or something. Like <laughs> that blade just sliced through it like it was butter. I would have had your son killed for this, though I suppose we're ahead on that account. Get out. That was ice cold. I still can't believe you fucking said that. Wow. Were you tempted? Not for a worm like him. But he won't be the last. And that's true. And that's something that he does need to be aware of. There are going to be other people out there who come for him. And they're going to come for him quick. And he needs to prepare. But Silco's mostly always prepared, right? Like... <laughs> Savika's raw is all right. Wait, wait, hold on. Mods, throw up a poll, please. I'm, I'm actually genuinely curious. Who is best girl? Like, who, who is best girl for you? Savika, Kate, Vi, Jinx. Who else can we throw in there? Who else can we throw in there that you guys might might like? Uh, sure, Mel. There you go. We're not throwing in Victor. I'm really, really curious for you. Whatever best girl means for you. I'm really, really curious. I know it's whatever best girl means for you. We're going to make one with Victor and, and all of that later. Hold on. I'm in between Vi and Kate. All right, mods. You guys got the poll. Feel free. Throw it up. Throw it up. Victor, Vic is best girl though. <laughs> we already know Vic is best girl in our hearts, man. We already know. That's why that's why we're doing this. For those of you on YouTube, hey, we tend to do live polls on here as well to be able to engage where people think first example, certain individuals or power dynamics and stuff are at in this situation. Jinx is perfect. Passy. Do we have something we need to talk about? All right, mods, let me know when it's up. What are the options and questions? Who is best girl? Vi, Jinx, Kate, Mel, Savika. She should have been protected. She should have been protected. <laughs> but for me, this whole scene, these quite literal like 13 minutes that we've seen so far have been a huge implication again on legacy. What do you want to be remembered by? What do you want to be like? What do you want to leave behind? Entire themes of overcoming of like, you know, taking people off their seats of, you know, doing certain things have just been highlighted time and time and time again into a bigger and bigger state. Wait, who's, is Mel not in there? Huh? Oh, it can only include four, right? Yeah. Mel, M E L bro. <laughs> Oh, I missed one. Yeah, yeah. Stop it and restart it. Stop it and restart it, brother. All right, hold on. The mods are going to stop this poll and then restart it. No, can include five one moment. Oh, okay, so it's just four. But if you can include five, you include five because at the moment it's just four, brother. There you go. But my, my main thing, though, is seeing this. Seeing this at hand, the, the characters are, man, out of this world. Out of this fucking world. Out of this world. Oof. Smoke it off, Silco. Smoke it off. Ah, shit. Um, bro, literally. <laughs> literally, my dude, like, oh. Oh, his just introduction, bro. Holy shit, look at this. This is beautifully shot. It's 
something from a peaceful sight to an immediate amount of tension. The way that Silco commands a scene is something that I've rarely seen with characters. Like, I've seen people attempt it, but I I'm sorry, but if your character monologues for 10 pages straight and needs to tell you about every single little thing in the, in the world, and then if you interrupt him, he gets mad, I'm I'm going to question the monologuing a little bit, right? Like, you can make a, a character, a, a character without the need to, like, overly monologue you can have a character like just presence carry that much weight. In Silco, carries weight without even saying a word. That is saying something. Perfect place for an ambush. Mm -hmm. mm. And you without your hammer. Mm. I was reminded recently of what brought us together in the first place. The threats beyond our walls. This city has a short memory. Progress. Far be it for me to stand in the way. This is so fucking tense, bro. Even Silco literally eyeing him down. Oh, wow. Wow. The wow. Our walls. This city has a short memory. Progress. Far be it for me to stand in the way. <laughs> it's right fucking humor, bro. <laughs> but still, even, even casting like this conversation that they're having interesting that they chose like that invitation a spot to meet and where to go through with it wow all right who's winning the poll ladies and gentlemen at this moment it seems as though kate is winning with 35 percent of the vote jinx with 31 percent uh in last place is vi with eight percent and right now it looks like oh jinx and kate tied oh jinx taking the lead now 36 to 32 38 to 31 Jinx taking a big lead here. Anyway. And Kate pushes back. <laughs> I wish... I, I love Silco's drip, and I really do wish I could dress like him someday. Like, like I, the drip is fire, bro. Free trade routes. Blanket amnesty, unrestricted access to the Hexgate sovereignty. You really think you're in a position to demand all this? I give you credit for your stunt. Boy, didn't think you had the stomach. But the big display followed by a request for parlay. Mm. You're tipping your hand. And he literally calls him out on that. Again, is he going to go ahead and give in? Or is he going to stand up for something? That whole idea of boundaries and, and, and what he wants to go out and stand for comes up again. And this is his moment, man. He needs to start standing up for himself. He's already done it for others. You know, others have tested him in this environment, whether it was Mel's mom, Mel, the council, uh, Vi, and now Silco, who he knows is a danger. Oof. You're afraid. I am afraid. Today, I got a glimpse of what war between us might look like. Your people wouldn't stand a chance. Council couldn't care less. I'm trying to save you from annihilation. <laughs> well, well. Not the fresh-faced Academy Pledge, are you? You want peace. This is the price. You'll discontinue the production of Shimmer. Half there already. Return the gemstone. Ooh. And I need Jinx. She has to pay for what she's done. They weren't her crimes. She was working for me. Believe me, if I had it my way, it'd be you rotting in Stillwater. Ace, thanks so much for the follow, but also, dude, legitimately, dude, 
dude, look at his face. He was Zilko was calm, cool, and collected. The moment that he mentions he wants drinks, he's losing it, bro. He yeah, he's losing it. His eye movements and whatnot already showing that he's uncomfortable with giving up Jinx. Jinx, if we're talking about that attachment right there, Jinx has become his his his, his attachment cycle. Like return the gemstone. And I need Jinx. He was calm, cool. Look at this. His eyes. She has to pay for what she's doing. He looks downright. He's, he's automatically thinking like, no, no. They looks. He loses his cool with Jinx. Whenever Jinx is brought up in an annotation where they might be consequences for her, he loses his cool. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> like this is amazing fucking writing amazing design to even show the worry in his eyes and what's going through that amazing yeah it weren't her crimes she was working for me believe me if i had it my way it'd be you rotting in still water but we can't make a deal with a snake and cut off its head my thing though is you got to be careful jace because if you want jinx you might get jinx and not in the way that you think. You may have just lit a fire. And I'm glad that you you stuck up for the boundaries that you believed in. And I'm glad in that way. But I have a feeling that like when that counter offer was, was there. You might just want me or whatever. Oof. I found your content through our, the Arcane Analysis. Created a Twitch account to follow the schedule. Ace, you're wonderful. Guys, drop some Doritos for Ace. Dude, thank you so much. You're, you're an absolute like G. Everyone that's followed here so far... Like, legitimately, you guys have been absolutely amazing. Like, holy crap, dude. I can't I can't thank you guys enough for the love and support there. Soko was willing to take the blame and, uh, yeah, for Jinx's crimes, just like Vander was for Vi. W which is saying a lot about care and saying a lot about, like, love. I'm going to squeeze them to death. Oof. We both have our shitty parts to play. Get me Jinx. And I'll give you your nation of Zon. Well, fuck. Selko's now now trapped. Jace may have unadvertently done like a genius move here. He wants the nation of Zon, but is he willing to give up his daughter for it? But put it plain and simple. Jace may, is trying to go ahead and give him so much for peace. Yeah, the nation of Zon. But would you be willing to give up your daughter for this nation? D yeah, that's literally cementing war. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. The smartest or the dumbest thing he's ever done. Well, I mean, Silk was in between a rock and a hard place. And honestly, yeah... Yeah. Interesting how now he's left in a weak, weaker position, right? Like, he didn't take that stride to, like, leave the other person in that thought pattern. Wow. Powerful. Powerful shit, ladies and gentlemen. Holy bananas. Holy guacamole. I, I don't even know what to state, man. This show, time and time and time and time and time and time and time again, it, 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 it's just showcasing why it's beautiful. It, it's showcasing why this media needs to be taken seriously. But she makes a sacrifice of Jinx and Silco in, in that one environment. So through that, though, or coined coin the phrase... Through that, though, I do have a question, which is, if you were in Silco's shoes, what would you do? Would you take it? Would you do it or no? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It also shows a lack of intel and care about the Undercity. Anyone in the Undercity would know that Silco cares about Jinx. Yeah. And so he's just acting on impulse there, which might be the start of war. And that is, for me, that, that, that screams everything. That, that, that we need to know like it screams at someone that didn't do their proper research and is in fact like 
acting on impulse here, acting on trying to like, they think they have a leg up and they accidentally overpressed. I personally would probably protect Jinx in his shoes. Yeah. But yeah, hi, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome to part two. I know this is a part two series, or literally part two, episode nine, the season finale of the season finale of Attack on Titan. No, I'm just kidding, Arcane. Uh, we're jumping straight into it. There's a lot to go ahead and dissect in here, and we are starting a couple minutes from where we left off. I'm actually kind of sad that we're letting this series go. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like there's a lot left to explore of this world. And just seeing how much of an impact this story has had on people that people have been able to go ahead and show up and like talk about and discuss and some people just wanting to argue, of course, all the characters in here and how much it means to them and how much people relate to these characters and 101 things. It's impacted me uh, more than you guys can imagine. And I, I sincerely thank you guys. I, I really, really do. I, I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being here, uh, for being a part of this journey, for coming through and allowing us to you know just be in a conversation about this show and be able to go ahead and be open about it i yeah for me it, it just blows my mind being able to go ahead and see all of this and if you guys want me to go ahead and do more arcane content like i don't know cinematic trailers or whatnot let me know i'd be more than happy to go ahead and do that from time to time i just need to go ahead and get a heads up like yo this is what we want this is what's cool like and i'd be more than happy to go ahead and do certain things like that However, I will say, all good things must come to an end. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will say, hey, if you like what, what you've seen so far, some of the discussions, you might not agree with me 110%. I don't even agree with me 110% like half the time. But if you do like some of the content, some of the discussions, the areas, 101 aspects that have been thrown out there, make sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Come join us in the Discord because that's literally how we vote on these shows. And that's how these shows come up, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. And if you guys want to support me in any way, shape, or form, I do have a throne uh, where I'm trying to go ahead and get better equipment better items all the time in order to go ahead and improve stream in this process and i do have a ko-fi coffee whatever that uh just helped me out with being able to go ahead and get dinner and stuff like that so guys i appreciate you a ton let's jump into it shall we what do you guys think we are gonna go ahead and start up a minute beforehand yeah i mean we still have bridging the rift uh 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 Showdown! Thanks so much for the sub. Appreciate it, man. Let's go. Okay, we're starting a little bit behind. Somewhere around. Oh, we're actually starting at the 13 minute mark. Holy fuck. All right, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Perfect place for an ambush. And you without your hammer. Ooh. I was Ooh, wait, 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 wait. Audio should be fine. Uh, or at least I thought it would. No, I'll lift it up just a little bit more. There we go. That should that should do it. There's something I find amazing about this. I love the fact that these are two men in positions of power, right, in this situation. But yet their colors are, are complete, like, opposites altogether. And yet they're both facing similar tribulations. They're both doing shady background deals with one another. They're both trying to go ahead and establish systems of power and control. This is one thing that I think Arcane does beautifully. And it's establish a character with one shot, with one scene. And with literally, like... Them just walking on screen, you can already feel the presence of that power, yeah? The Silco's in black, red, and gold. Jace is in white, red, and gold. Which is why I'm saying, Syncline, it's so beautiful to see, like, the colors of power and, like, the way that, that they're being used. Whether for good or for evil or whatever type of survival things. Is there good and evil in this show, though? In Arcane, ladies and gentlemen? I'm gonna say no. I'm just straight up gonna be like, no. There is no such thing as good or evil in this show. There's a lot of different goals and expectations and stuff that come through it 
you know, and the methods which they use aren't necessarily the best. But I think that's life as well. That is life as well, actually. Perfect place for an ambush. Damn. Without your hammer. Okay, uh, be before we continue, I do gotta ask you guys this. Can anyone find me a link to uh, Soko's outfit, please? Like, uh, it might be on Wish, might be on Amazon.com. Uh, someone wanna go ahead and send me a, a like, yeah, put it on the Discord. I'll try and I'll try and see if I can get it, or if not, I'll throw it up on the throne. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to full drip this for future arcane episodes. <laughs> if we were ever ever able to do it, Evil Ed needs some drip, brother. Evil Ed needs some drip. The eyes extra. Oh, oh, oh. I was reminded recently of what brought us together in the first place. The threat I know. beyond our walls. This city has a short memory. Progress. Far be it mm. for me to stand in the way. Free trade routes. Take a look at this. They're both talking about, of course, the threats outside the walls. I'm sure I talked about this in part Progress. one. But I want, what I want you guys to pay attention Probably to really quickly is how are they facing one another? And, and this, in social psychology, if you guys ever take a social psychology class, I really, lowest price I see is, that's fine, bro. That's fine. They, they would talk about, or their good social psychology class should talk about body language, right? And what it means to go ahead and mimic situations like this. What's up, Cassie Rat? How you doing? So when we're in a situation like this, what does it mean to not face someone straight, right? To not have your full body facing that uh, straight. There's signs of caution. There's signs of boundaries. There's a sign of a wall being there. Uh, even with like a shoulder tilt, a shoulder tilt. Trying to go ahead and match, trying to go ahead and keep that uh, situation. Side to side and try to minimizing how much they are showing each other, which is interesting because they all have something to hide. And even this, right? Not giving it to him. But literally pressing it on them. Not not necessarily being like, here, arigato, arigato, thanks, right? Like, no. He's like, bam. Like, you know, like, you know, just a soft push. Like, this is yours. You're going to take care of this. Just that, like, Silco in his body language and how he knows how to control people. Beautiful. Beautiful. But I feel like Silco, like, does Silco truly want things? Adi got that. <laughs> Does Silco truly want war? I don't think so. I, I I don't think so. Does Silco want to rebuild or grow or expand or do whatever he needs to do to go ahead and like do what he need like do what he needs for his people? Probably, yeah. Right? Is that always the best choice though? Yeah. He pauses for a split second with his hand in his pocket to see Jace's reaction. Just for a split second. Free trade routes. Blanket amnesty. Unrestricted access to the Hexgate sovereignty. You really think you're in a position to demand all this? I give you credit for your stunt. Boy, didn't think you had the stomach. But the big display followed by a request for parlay. You're tipping your hand. Mm. Mm. You're afraid. I am afraid. Today, I got a glimpse of what war between us might look like. Your people wouldn't stand a chance. Council couldn't care less. I'm trying to save you from annihilation. So what he just did here is really interesting. And, and like, and, and as a psychologist, I'm worried about Jace. This is me being 110% honest with you guys. What he just did here 
like terrifies me down to my core. And I can't believe I didn't catch this earlier. I am afraid. Today I got a glimpse of what war between us might look like. Your people wouldn't stand a chance. Council couldn't care less. What do you think he did? I, I'm throwing this out here so that that way you guys are you guys are aware of it, right? That you guys are able to go ahead and, and think the way that, like, you know, I start to think. What did he do here that makes me afraid? Jay's shifting the power balance. Aside from shifting the power balance in, in a situation like this, Uno reverse card. What he's doing right now. Yeah, the dichotomy, your people. Your people. He is trying, like, in a way, he's cutting off connection with the people of the lanes at that point in time. The moment he says, your people, guess what? They're not my people, so it's okay for me to go over and hurt them. Instead of saying the people that live here, he uses your people. Words are fucking powerful. And this is why we always have to pay attention to the way that things are phrased, right? The moment that I say your people, all of a sudden I'm absolving myself of a lot of like the guilt that may come through with me taking a life, with me doing certain things. All of a sudden they're your people that I'm taking care of because your people are the rebellious people. Your people are doing this and they must be put down instead of saying the people in here. Ooh. It, it is, like, it is fucking insane hearing that. And I didn't even catch it the first time we ran through this, right? Because we ran through this part in part one. And I didn't even catch that. And the fact that I just caught it right now, and I was like, holy shit. That is, oh. <laughs> but isn't it validation of his de demands autonomy? But do all, are all the people of the lanes his people? Let, let, let's put it this way. Because all of a sudden, think about it this way, in, in a big fight, if Victor was here, does Victor classify as a person of, the like, literally, would, would Victor classify under Selko's people by Jace's own standards? Or would he be, no, you're, you're part of Piltover, then what is the difference? He used it before with Victor, yet which drove him away. Yeah. that That's why I'm like, oh... Jace, what are you doing, my friend? Jace, Jace. Wow, wow, wow. That's some powerful, powerful stuff. Like, the writers, the team that made this. Guys, I can't praise you guys enough. This, I wish I would have done, like, I wish I would have been doing this earlier and caught this, like, live when shit was happening and been able to go ahead and analyze all of this shit together. Because honestly, like, this is amazing. Like, th this is, like, well-written, down to the core, even the lines being done, the, the way that they're delivered, like, it carries weight, like, phenomenal job. Like, whoa. Free trade routes, blanket amnesty, unrestricted access to the Hexgate sovereignty. You really think you're in a position to demand all this? I give you credit for your stunt. Boy, didn't think you had the stomach. But the big display followed by a request for parlay. You're tipping your hand. Mm. You're afraid. I am afraid. Today I got a glimpse of what war between us might look like. Your people wouldn't stand a chance. Council could... His eye, bro, you're right... He did notice that, and he did not like that. But that's such a oof. Jace, I think you got to be careful for what you wish for, because literally the like the lanes are essentially an atomic bomb waiting to go off on you guys. Like you guys don't even know what happens. I hate I hate to use this analogy, but it's a really really good analogy to use. What happens uh, to an animal if you corner it? A scared animal. What happens to an animal if you corner it? To stream Act 1 when it released. Oh, shit. <clears throat> they lash out. They lash out. So what happens when all of a sudden you keep pushing, you keep pushing, you keep pushing, and you're not bettering the conditions of living for these people? <clears throat> you're not doing anything in regards to helping these people. What do you think will happen? They will lash out. And not in a pretty way. Some play dead. Of course, it's fight or flight. But for some people, especially knowing like 
some of the characters, some of the characters that we have in here, they're going to fight back. They're going to fight back. Couldn't care less. I'm trying to save you from annihilation. Well, well. Not the fresh-faced Academy Pledge, are you? You want <laughs> peace. This is the price. You'll discontinue the production of Shimmer. Half there mm. already. Return the gemstone. And I need Jinx. She has to pay for what she's done. Oh. Peace. This is the price. You'll discontinue the production of Shimmer. Half there already. Return the gemstone. And I need Jinx. She has to pay. The quick no in his eyes. I love how everything else, he's looking straight at the camera. And the quick no, the quick looking down and looking back up, like, no, that's not going to happen. That, like, there's been studies. There's been a lot of studies done into eye movement, eye tracking, what they mean. Uh, some positive, some discrediting it, others accrediting it. It's like a it's like a ping pong match, right? Where sometimes we use our eyes to express our emotions and our in our thoughts. With this, for me, this screams almost an immediate. Uh, you had the other two, but you really pushed the button when you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Given what she's done. They weren't her crimes. She was working for me. Believe me, if I had it my way, it'd be you rotting in still water. But we can't make a deal with a snake and cut off its head. We both have our shitty parts to play. Ooh. Get me Jinx, and I'll give you your nation of Zon. But would that be possible? As Soko, if I was in Soko's shoes, what could what would I do? Evil Ed, what would you do in a situation like this? There's a number of ways that I would actually try and approach this. First off, we're in a situation where he thinks he can go ahead and give me a country. The country that I'm searching for, the country that I'm trying to build. If I try and build this country, does that mean peace? Probably not. Because all of a sudden, Piltover will have something to fear. Something genuine to fear. They might have just stopped and appeased sociologically others in the, the area saying that they caught the terrorist or they caught individuals. But is that going to actually appease the situation in the long term? No. What can I do? I could go ahead and either A, intensify. B, showcase or high highlight how Jace caused this issue and plenty been even a bigger blame on him. C talk to Jinx uh and, and tell her the situation that's happening and see what whatever she wants to do. D do what he says or E and start a revolt and start a revolution. E or F I can fake my own death in a way, and allow the situation to simmer a little bit uh, by allowing, let's say, everything to boil up and then soothe out and then come back into the surface. Uh, I I'm just thinking of all the possibilities that could come from this. For Silco, Silco's in a pretty trapped position because no matter what, they are going to continuously come to Jinx, right? Thanks so much for following, Avenues. Appreciate it. So, but then the question becomes this. How long will Piltover stand the nation of Zon, if that did come to be? Like, I feel like Soko, I'm, I'm just going to be straight up about it. Soko would do anything for Jinx. Jinx is, is literally his baby girl, if we're going to be honest, right? Like, that's his daughter. Like, if, if we're just going to call it how it is, right? Not that, like, in terms of, like, oh, is he, like, the healthiest role model to look up to? Not all not all father figures are, right? Not, not everyone is, if we're going to be in that realistic. But I feel like Soko would be willing to take, like, a bullet in the head for Jinx. Soko would be there for her at moments where a lot of people would have given up, whether it's to, yes, whether it's to advance his own plans, but also because there's a genuine form of care and attachment and all of these things for her. Soko, I, like, I really want to give Soko an award for someone that cares and someone that's trying to be there for someone, despite him not needing to be there, right? 
So I know Soko tried to give himself up right now. Soko would 100% take a bullet for Jinx. I agree with you, Ed. Yeah, 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 yeah. A father that carries is worthy of any number of fathers that don't, even if they're... Yeah, yeah, because here's the thing. What makes good parents? Let's talk about that for a second, right? What is, what is the difference between a parent and a good parent? Do you guys know? And, and I'm not going to go with the standard uh, psychological response. It depends on how you define it, right? No, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm just going to be straight up through a psychoeducational perspective. The difference between a parent and a good parent is this. A parent will go ahead and establish these bottom two for you. These are the standard things that a parent has to do because they decided to go ahead and have you. A parent is going to go ahead and say, hey, you know what? They're not going to threaten you with, oh, you have a house over your head. You have room to sleep. You have water. Congratulations. You're doing the bare minimum to keep your child alive. A good parent is going to go ahead and start focusing on building up their person's self-esteem, building up the confidence of their kid, being able to go ahead and allow them to have friends and grow and be a part of a family and be able to go ahead and be, like feel respect of themselves or others in that case. A good parent is going to go ahead and allow them that patience and whatnot to try and reach self-actualization. Meeting any of the bottom needs, that's what the baseline of just parenting is. Meeting anything above here, that's what a good parent should be doing. And that's exactly why, why I'm highlighting this because people often confuse what is a good parent and what is just a normal parent through that? Phenomenal. If we're looking at that, though, if we're looking at that, what does Soko have? Soko is tr trying his best to literally, like, keep Jinx in the family. Keep Jinx in the family. To keep things secure. Yuria, also welcome on in. Appreciate you. Uh, especially the fact that YouTube brought you in. I'm so YouTube's amazing, man. YouTube's amazing at, like, outreach and getting all you wonderful people to come and join us for this finale. Hammer Donger. Astonishing. You say all this came about in your own brief lifespan? Oh. How were you able to accomplish so much so quickly? You'd be surprised what you can pull off when your life depends on it. Hammer Dinger. Uh, uh, why this form? Surely there are more efficient and safer methods of transportation. Oh. Enough to give people I love this. Heimerdinger is getting a reality check. I guys, can we get some ah uh, woos? Ah uh, woos in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh like Heimerdinger is getting a huge reality check from this. And like being able to come in and even state that right. Oh god, is that gonna be our new emote there? Ah uh, woos. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it's amazing to see that heimerdinger is acknowledging this right like hey you could actually get this done in your lifespan like what all of a sudden his ideas for what progress can look like start to change right and this is why like as an attachment specialist i love talking about shit like this this is my go-to man like how do we change how do we as individuals change? Dinger learns a moral. How do we as human beings change, ladies and gentlemen? So, you know, oh, we're about to back it up just a little bit. Don't worry. No worries. How do we as human beings change and interact with our environment and so on and so forth? We change because of our experiences. We change because of the attachments that we make with others, the memories and the experiences that we share with them. Every single time we form a new contact, a new acquaintance, a new friendship, a new whatever, we start the process of change. We start the process of learning new things, of experiencing new things. Man, I, I, this is, this is fucking hype, dude. This is awesome. All right, let me back it up. How were you able to accomplish so much so quickly? You'd be surprised what you can pull off when your life depends on it. Uh, uh, why this form? 
Surely there are more efficient and safer methods of transportation. <laughs> it's not enough to give people what they need to survive. Rena, they welcome on in. They need to live. That quote. It's not enough to give people what they need to survive. You have to give them what they need to live. And as a therapist, as a psychologist, this is actually very, very fucking true. People that are just in survival setting, like in survival settings, are they thriving? Are, are, are they actually feeling fulfilled? No, no, no. A good psychologist is always looking and including yourself, like do a self inventory. Let, let, let's do this really quickly, which is right now. Do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel like you are living legitimately being fulfilled in the way that you are living life? Or do you feel like you're just surviving and you're just coasting on by? I ask this because it's, it's actually pretty, pretty important. Like you can be making hundreds and thousands of dollars and feel like you're just surviving because you're not really having a life to go ahead and experience. And, and, and in the other way, right, you might be living your best life and not be making a lot, a ton of money, but that's, it's ultimately defined by yourself. What does that mean to you? This is, these are some of the key aspects that we look at in like a daily living activity setting or 101 other inventories that like, what does it mean for you to survive? What does it mean for you to live? Third world economy sucks. Coasting until life, until karma hits me again. Living my best life. After dying twice earlier this year and fighting cancer, you have to live to live. You do, Sincline. And honestly, man, all the fucking power to you. Because you, that's not an easy journey, man. And I know I know you mentioned it once before, but like legitimately, all the power and all the praise to you because you're a fucking fighter, man. You're you're a straight up fighter and like I I, I am glad that you're here with us and I'm I like beyond fucking happy that like you're able to go ahead and kick cancer's ass, you know, if we're being realistic about it, and that you're able to go ahead and share some of these moments with us because it's important, man. It is important to live, and it's important to live the best life that you possibly think you can. Surviving, trying to get back to enjoying things, but my head feels stuck in the... It does. And that's the thing. is Sometimes we might feel stuck, but what are we doing to get out of that stuck, you know? Out of that, like, mud that we might be stuck in. Like, what do we do? Because we want more than just survive. Well, welcome on in, because that's exactly what we do. Guys, drop some Doritos for Syncline and everyone if you're going through a rough time. These self-care Doritos are for you, ladies and gentlemen. And I will throw this out. Hey, this is not a replacement for, like, you know, having one-on-one -on -one sessions with a therapist or a psychologist or anything like that, ladies and gentlemen. I love you all. This is a good form of psychoeducation and allowing a community for a support network. But if you guys are going through a rough time, do seek out mental health help from a professionals in your area. It means the world to literally be able to go ahead and see things in you. And that's exactly what I'm going to go ahead and throw out there, ladies and gentlemen. I, mean, I love y'all. I really appreciate y'all. And for me, like, even if I don't know you, just know, like, even if this is 30 years down the line, know that I'm fucking proud of you. I'm proud of you because there's hundreds of thousands of other videos out there. Good, long, short, uh, some emoji react or some deep analysis, 101 different styles of content out there. Yet you stumbled on this and you've been a part of this journey, I, I, I assume. And for that, I thank you, and I'm proud that you're able to go ahead and like see some of these videos. And I hope that you take at least some mental health concepts away from this as well. You always say, seek out a professional when we're going to give the... <laughs> oh. Doritos are self-care? Yeah. Uh, cross staves. The reason being is because we're fighting back against the stigma that, that Doritos are gamer food, that Doritos are bad, that Doritos are everything. No, we call them self-care Doritos because self-care is everything that you wish it to be, right? It can quite, self-care can be good health self-care and self-care can be uh, even some destructive forms of self-care are self-care. It is what you do for yourself to be able to go ahead and enjoy the moment and be able to live and even help yourself out at least a little bit mentally and or psychologically. 
So for me, self-care Doritos are a form of saying, hey, you know what? Even though Doritos have a stigma to them as gamer food, it's not just gamer food. And for me, Doritos have gotten me through some tough times uh, in a weird way. They carry some memories, like some deep personal memories as to what it means to survive and what it means that like to have some sort of comfort and to have a community that's there for you. Watching your videos is so it could be if it's self care. Welcome on in. <laughs> Sorry, we're backing it up. Hell yeah. It's not enough to give people what they need to survive. You have to give them what they need to live. Oh. A thousand times I've imagined this moment. Never like this. All we ever wanted. No. Oh. We didn't even haggle. And what do I lose but problems? No, oh, so cool. Oh, it all makes sense now, brother. And he poured one out for the homie. He poured one out. Oh, now he understands. Oh, the misery. Holy shit. Oh, I did not expect this much depth. And oh my god, what the fuck is this? What is this? Oh. oh. A thousand times I've imagined this moment. Never like this. All we ever wanted. The boy didn't even haggle. And what do I lose but problems? Oh, it all makes sense now, brother. I love how he's even stating this, right? I love the, the, the way he's telling himself this and you're hearing this self-talk. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, let's talk about it. How many of you do some, some form of self-talk? I do. I'm going to be straight up. Self-talk is completely normal, ladies and gentlemen. Talking to yourself, being able to go ahead and work through your problems. Like, even some people do it while they're playing video games, right? Like, if someone just just sniped you, ah, I should take a different way. That was really fucking stupid of me to go in here. Like, I should approach it this way. I should choose another character, whatever. We do self-talk as ways of healing. This is why therapy is amazing. Therapy can help a ton with, with aspects like this. A lot of people stigmatize self-talk, though. A lot of people point to self-talk and they're like, self-talk is weird. No. Self-talk is normal. Self-talk is a part of the healing process. Hearing him go through this, he's stating quite clearly they're giving him everything. And he, he even loses the problems that happens, but yet he's still... It's still weighing on his mind. You might have envisioned your way to success, but if you lose something that you care about, are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to let someone that you care about go in, in that process? That is wow. Wow. And him having, having this genuine conversation with them, keeping a statue of Vander there, like... Oh, oh, that's a uh, wings of redemption and build, please. That That's fucking wow. Talk about being mind blown, man. Like powerful scene, powerful imagery, especially the fact that like, you know, Vander's ideals, a statue overlooms him as he's just sitting down again. <laughs> like, whoa. Things so one day as a daughter. Jinx, Jinx, Jinx. No, you weren't supposed to hear that. Jinx, no, no, 
Oh no! So one day, as a daughter. Is there anything so one day, as a daughter? <laughs> Man, no. There's something else I'm screaming about. 1801. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to see what else I'm crying about? Like, that first off, hearing all of this is something else. But you guys ready? We're at 1801. Remind me. Fuck, dude. Certified misery moment. <laughs> Easy clap. Wow. 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 Like, that is, that is, in, oh. Oh, even now we can't escape the intro analysis. Like, hold on, hold on. 1801, yeah? That is such a beautiful just like callback to this. As a daughter. Like, except that this time she's not looking up. This time Powder's looking down. And this time she's not the statue. You know, she she's not the one that's hidden that's still part of the rock. Vander is. That's wild. That that is that is wild. Like the amount of like callbacks that this one little thing just, just which makes me wonder. It does make me wonder, right? Is she about to just go on full destruction mode? Is this gonna be a personal trigger for everything and anything that may come? Oh yeah, yeah. I kid you. Honestly, a lot of people have some grounding techniques. Some of them include like looking down on the ground to try and ground yourself or even process information. A lot of people, that's what they do. They look down as a way to process all this information. That's a lot. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait a second. If Jinx is filled with shimmer, if Jinx is filled with shimmer, can she die? Because doesn't shimmer replenish you or like keep you alive in all of these things? Yeah, she can. Okay, okay. I, I, all of a sudden, you got me thinking like... Vander died, didn't he? Yeah, you're right. Is Vander dead? Is there anything so undoing as a daughter? Sí, señor. No, no me digas así. No me digas así. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning stuff now. I'm questioning shit now. Ask me no follow-up questions, but Vander is definitely dead. 
Sometimes death is just a, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, Vander's dead. <laughs> hey, yo. Piss off. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go, guys. No, this record player doesn't mean anything. No, the, the, this record this record player is, is a Netflix original. Netflix. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Oh no no! <laughs> oh fuck! Everyone out. Guys, we got ourselves a bit of a of a Mexican standoff here, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! A woo! I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a, can I get ourselves a little bit of a wee haw? Let, let, let's get a little bit of a showdown time on in here, ladies and gentlemen. Who are you voting for right, right now, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Start making bets here. <laughs> oh no! Oh oh no! Rematch time! Yeah! <laughs> oh come on! Oh come on, dude! Ooh. Good shit. Good shit. <laughs> Damn, even throwing a drink at her. Savika is such a wonderful fighter. I was fucking shocked for a second. I was fucking shocked for a second. She is such a wonderful fucking fighter. Like, just take a look at this, right? First off, the distraction that comes in through this, right? Immediate, like, your mind has to go there. If we're looking at this, right? Just, just really quick. All right, so you're already on the defensive, right? Trying to get out. This combo right here blows my mind. Everything else, was, I was like, okay, with. So distraction, distraction, she closed in the gap. Because that's what she's doing. Once it's there, what can you do? Right? What can you do? All this pressure's in. Yes, you stab this through. And guess what? All of your attention as a fighter is wherever this is at. Wherever your main fighting weapons can't, can't be in. So this is something that, like, you know... For example, they'll teach you any good fighting school, any good martial arts school, mixed martial arts school, is how to get rid of those distractions and think accordingly, right? And be a part of the fighting techniques. So if we're fighting, say that we're fighting MMA, Muay Thai, uh, karate even, and if we're jumping back and forth and I step on your leg, where, where does your attention go to? 
to your leg that I'm stepping on. It's harder for you to step back unless you know how to defend yourself. All of a sudden, that becomes a weakness and that becomes an opening for kicks, punches, whatever I need to do to happen. Ed knows how to hand, handle himself in a fight pretty, yeah, actually, really, really well. So that, that, that's why I'm looking at this, and I'm like, immediately, seeing all of this attention happening here, yes, it's a lot of pain, it's a lot of everything, but she needs to, get, like, get some distance. Get some distance quick, because the way that she closed it, I'd hit you with uh, V-Trigger, Ed. Oh, oh. But look at this, right? Distraction, that came with the one two, one two punch across. <laughs> she overshot. From a position where she doesn't have a lot of energy. Look. Oh, let me back it up. One, two. Comes through. Hit. Slides down. One, two again. She's not that stable enough to create enough force to go through with it. Unless she's going to fully twerk her leg. She does. But look. Overshot. Her position was 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 in a different higher power altogether. Look at Savika. I'm sorry. We're, we're analyzing this just so that you guys are aware of this as well. How someone who sees that. Savika was waiting for this punch. Uh, so you can analyze this makes it all the much more interesting. I hope it does. So look, one, two, uh, goes down. Savika's in a sight. Look, Savika's waiting for this. You can tell that she was already waiting for it to come so she could dip out. If the punch was coming from the other direction, it probably could have landed. However, because it's coming in the same direction, all she needs to do is turn sideways. That's it. She misses and you have her. Boom. Perfect. Oh, we're here for the analysis. That's why it's that clap, grab, done. Yep. I would have gone for a throw, but sure. Knee, perfect. And big punch. Yeah. There's nothing to do. Not the first time Savika's balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is, when you fight, you have to commit, right? You have to commit to what your fighting style is. And you have to commit to a punch. You have to commit to a kick. Are you going to get punched and kicked back? Absolutely. You are. That's just the way it works. Like, you will probably not get out unscathed. It is rare the time that you get out unscathed. unscathed. However, seeing the openings that your opponent has, Savika's, like, battle prowess and her ability to go ahead and, like, Co like co combat adaptability is huge like that's why i'm like that's beautiful like this is an awesome fucking fight scene i wonder if they had someone with martial arts experience like choreograph this fight because it is beautifully done yeah they did okay well your guard needs work. Oh! I wish I could say it gets easier, kiddo. But I'd be lying. Right, what boy? What I say is, she still needs you. They all do. So what do you say? Vander. 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 That's my girl. Vi can still has this image of Vander. But Powder or Jinx does not. Woo! Boy, that's fucking spicy! Oh, Vi actually saw Vander as like a parental figure and all of these things, right? And we never saw Jinx bring that up. Oh, man. That being said, we're backing it up just a little bit because, heck, yeah, man. This shit has a lot, lot to fucking talk about. A lot of content to genuinely, like, dig your teeth into. Which is, there's a lot to go, like, if we're looking at this, all the struggles, everything that this character, like, that Vi has gone through. Seeing Vander and Vander being her voice of inspiration... We all have different voices within ourselves, right? We all have different role models that play a big role in our lives. And I'll throw this out to you guys. Who, who, who speaks to you? What role model do you have in your life that pushes you, that allows you to grow, that allows you to feel things or do certain things? They all do. So what do you say? Oh. 
The voice is speak to me. That's my girl. Oh. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> I guess it's, it's back down to one and two arms. Oh, man. Oh, man. Like, unlock new power, rip off arm. Wow. <laughs> X Tech Supremacy. Well, Soko. Did that bring your sister back, though? I know, I know what she's going for, and I even in a fight, like if you overcome a good fighter, a lot can come out of that. Like a lot of emotions really do come out. Like. If you've ever been in a situation where you're literally like you fight this person and every single time you fight them, you lose. It's so fucking frustrating. And like it makes you want to keep adapting and overcoming and doing certain things. Like once you get that W, man, it, it's oh, man, it, it, it's yeah. She also wants Soko. I know she's slowly, slowly but surely cleaning house. Bravo, sis. Jinx? What the fuck? Jinx? Wait a minute. Jinx? I'm I'm not feeling so good, Mr. <laughs> no. Oh no. Oh 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 no. She's cooked up on shimmer. Counselors, my recent unsanctioned activities in the underground have shown me two things. I'm not fit to govern the people who live there. And neither are you. Our opportunity to demonstrate our compassion, our dedication, our solidarity has passed. They're right not to trust us. You're Ooh. walking a fine line, Ooh. Chase. With respect, I... A fine line of what? Y'all haven't even gone down there. I'm walking a fine line. He, he might be onto something. He might actually be a little bit right. You know. Like. <laughs> it's like you council members haven't been down there either. Like the boy becomes the man. Which is true. And I'm glad he's finally able to go and speak up for himself. And literally speak his truth in this way. But what does this mean for this council? I feel like even if he were to turn the reins, he's gonna, he's turning the reins over to quite literally a big explosion that's going to happen. Like, quite literally. By him giving up power or him ceding power or him just being like, you know what, I don't want to be in this position anymore or anything like this, it's a ticking time bomb waiting to go off in this council. Why? Because all of a sudden there's a vacancy, and even if it's appointed, now they have a shit ton to deal with, a lot more to go ahead and, and try and do. it. It's It's a lot. Look, Ed, being right is no excuse to lack decorum. <laughs> I don't give a shit what any of you think of me anymore. Damn! Oh! Oh! He's like, hey, counselor. <laughs> hey, counselor. <laughs> hey, counselor, this, this is what I think about your opinion. <laughs> His balls drop. CEO gone wild. Oh, that's so good. Oh. Except you. You were right. You were always right. My days here 
are numbered, but I've come with Victor, my partner, and a Zonite, with one... Chat, let's pretend you're the council, right? Council! Do y'all know about all the atrocities that are happening in the lanes? No, probably not, because you've never been in there. Do y'all know all about the stigma that is happening down there? Y'all must know about stigma, right? Chat, you must know about stigma, right? Dig my nuts. <laughs> I'm not going to continue with that. Got him. That's what I care about. Your opinion council. Gotcha. Ah, I'm out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Got him. Uh, but no, I, like being realistic about it. Being realistic about it. Fuck you, Ed. You know it was good. Being realistic about it. I actually love the fact that he's setting himself out, right? He's he's setting himself up in a scenario that he can go ahead and thrive in, in terms of actually putting out boundaries, in terms of like actually seeing what he truly thinks and sees and feels and whatnot. Because the only thing that, like, yes, people might might hate you, people might have all of these opinions of you, but if you're living your life honestly, like, okay, are, are you going to be affected by what others think in that way? He kind of he did kind of go nuclear. He did kind of go nuclear. But in a situation like this, and this is why, why I'm highlighting this, is this going to be good for the council? Well, it's good for him, but I don't think this is good for the council. I legitimately think, I fear for the council right now. I, I, I really do. My days here are numbered, but I've come with Victor, my partner, and a Zonite, with one final proposal. Jace has brokered a peace with Silco in exchange for the Undercity's independence. What nonsense! We have proceeded! Oh, shit. Rada, rada, rada. <laughs> wow. Wow. We have procedures. I can't believe you did this. <laughs> After all the hard work we put into this. You know, like, damn, dude. Slow motion disagreements. But my thing is, okay, if they're so complacent, right, they knew everything that was happening down there. And they really did know everything that, like, you know, in terms of, like, Oh, wow, why can't why are they acting like this? You you have to know at least a little bit as to why they're acting like this. Now they're trying to gain their independence and you're mad that you don't have control over them or like, you know, you might no longer have control or ease of access through that route. I find that interesting. I find it interesting that the only moment they're willing to act is a moment when it affects their bottom line instead of for the best of the people there. J Jace already recognizing the identity of Zon. Dude, yes. Yes. Can't can't have rich people without poor people. I also wonder what would happen if Jace took away this technology from them. Like, what if Jace just shut everything down? What if Jace was like, okay, my hex tech, my rules. You want to not grant them that? Okay, let me take my hex tech back. Doesn't work that way. No, no. <laughs> but it would be a good and interesting way of testing things out. With the most important person, Victor. Yeah. And, and I like the fact that he has that communication with Victor. That, like, Victor was the individual that he sought out to, right? You can't unmake Hextech. No, but what you can do is you can go ahead and, like, you know, destroy it. If you wanted to. Jinx. I don't like this. Why why am I hold on. Hold on. Why why am I I'm legit like I'm I'm scared. What the fuck? Hold on. <laughs> why am I scared? <laughs> um 
<laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. The dog knows. Oh, no. Really thought I buried this place. Hey, yo. But I should have known better. Powder. Nothing <laughs> ever stays dead. <laughs> Are we alone? For now. Maybe forever. Want to know a secret? Why is Shoko she? Thinks he made Jinx. With all his rants and his hard-won lessons. Excise your doubts, Jinx. Be what they fear, Jinx. Like everything was the same as when Bander left him. Oh, but no. But he oh, didn't no. make it, Jinx. Oh, no. You did. Ugh. 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 Jinx. Ah. Ah. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, technically you did. Okay, technically you're only responsible for your actions. But but if, but if we're being realistic about it. <sighs> yes, the trauma, the attachment trauma specifically of Vi leaving you when you're so anxiously attached to her can affect you in a big way like that and can force you to do certain things, right? Which is why it's important. It was important for you to go. It still is important for you to stick out therapy jinx. But looking at the way that you're taking on about this. Man, man. I feel like the environment failed you. Your caregivers failed you. Your sister failed you. Silco failed you. You failed you. And that is rough. How, who do you turn to in a situation where the world wants you dead? Who do you, who do you turn to when it, it's quite literally the monster you created? The monster I created. The monster we all created. Dude, this sucks. Like this is like in terms of like being in like in Jinx's position and thinking about it like through through her lens, and at the same time, imagine being Vi and being like caring about Jinx and caring about Powder and trying to be there for her. Ooh, a lot of people seem to downplay Vi, but Vi is. Vi is a character in her own right, right, right? Like, she actually cares about Jinx. She wouldn't be in this journey if she didn't care about Powder or Jinx. She wouldn't be trying to go ahead and restore certain things. She wouldn't have tried to go ahead and connect. Yes, she has her emotional outbursts and so on and so forth, but... Man. Man. Jinx, what a line to fucking deliver. I'm sorry, Powder. I never meant to leave you. You never left. I always heard you. Shadows in the streets. Prickles on the back of my neck. Your voice pushing me. Picking me up. When all the colors were oh. black. You're the reason I'm still alive. Oh no. Picking me up. I love that. I love how it goes. Hold on. I love how it goes from like orange with a little bit of purple to just purple. Like that is oof. Oof. All the colors were black. You're the reason I'm still alive. I spent so many nights in that shitty prison on that freezing floor, hungry, bloody, counting the hours. The oof. only thing. Time's run the out. Only thing Time's run out. Was the thought of getting back to you. But you never did. You came back to me with somebody else. You you came back and then you left me. You fought me. 
ah, this is pain. This is, uh, ah, ah, I'm fucking like, this hurts. Hold on. <laughs> this hurts. <laughs> like, I don't want to cry on stream, but I, this actually fucking hurts. Oh. Are we still sisters? Oh. Nothing is oh. ever going to change that. Oh. I always knew you'd come back. What's going on? Let me get some water. Hold on. This scene's making me fucking thirsty. Holy shit, boys. This scene's making me thirsty. I'm sweating, dude. I am like, like, <laughs> talk about tension. Talk about fucking tension, dude. On. Kills through dehydration, to be honest. And Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> no. Oh, fuck, I got it all over me. I fucking squirted on my son. Stop. <laughs> That's fucking do it. Stop. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it's a good thing it was water. It's on my phone. Ah, ah. Hey, you're... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I need to clean up. Hold on, boys. But first off... Ah, 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 no. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Oh, dude. I, I almost fucking drowned. I almost drowned. That shit hit like the back of my throat, and like I wasn't right. That sounds dirty too. I yeah, that ooh, oh, oh. I I'm scared. I am scared. I am scared. Also, I know I talked about this. I think a long time ago. Um, it, it's always so hard to get to get Silco to come out of out to parties, bro. I I am legit terrified. Like. Is she doing an empty chair technique, essentially, on this? Is she... Because I think I talked about this a while ago. Did I not? Did I not? I feel like I did. I feel like I did this in joking, where I said, like, oh, what would you do, you know, if you if you had to tell someone to these people, and they couldn't do anything about it? And, oh, oh man. Like, like, my heartbeat is, like, quenching inside of my anus right now, man. Like, it's like, boom, 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 boom. Like, this is... Oh, mm. I, uh, I I don't know shit. First off, I want to run straight off saying I don't pre-watch anything. Like everything that we watch is chosen by you guys here, very fucking clearly. So seeing this shit actually happen, it's oh, oh, all the time you brought. I thought about this scene. No, no, you, you did it, and you had to shut our mouths not to spoil you. Probably want to get that. Yeah, I, I'm gonna back it up just a little bit. I had to clean off my keyboard and whatnot. I'm like shaking, dude. I, I'm shaking. Cause, cause what this means, it's like, fuck. I'd be shitting my pants if I were them. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, 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 I'd be shitting my pants right now if I were, if I were either of them. If I were, if I were in that seat, I would be terrified. I would, I. <sighs> what she might do. Hold on, what she might do. Because Gasolchian training, like especially Gasolchian therapy, empty tricks, I think, one of the most popular ones. However, you can also incorporate that with CBT and individuals with huge cognitive disorders might go ahead and highlight this and be like, so who am I to you? Outweighing the good and the bad. And I, 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 I'm scared. I am so scared where this is going to go. Senor Pinguino is, is like, I just threw him to the other room. Dude. Dude, dude, like, <sighs> also, these are all dolls in here. Also, thanks so much for following Roman Spartan, but I appreciate it. These are all dolls, you know, that like she talks to her family. Who's going to be the next one? 
She wants to make a statement clearly by inviting everyone to her, to this luscious tea party. Oh man. Oh my my I I, I Fuck, I don't think you guys can hear my heartbeat. <laughs> this is not a stethoscope. You guys can't. <laughs> oh, man. It's like beating out of my chest right now. Holy shit, dude. Oh. Sisters. <laughs> Nothing is ever going to change that. I always knew you'd come back. What's going on? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. He took everything. And the fact that she gagged him, too. She is literally doing an open chair technique. She is doing interventions on herself unknowingly. In a in in a messed up way. I I like. He can't fight without his words. He's tied down, and she's using them to ping. She's pinging what she wants her narrative to be off of these people that she considers family. Oh. From us. Right here, he stabbed Vander in the back. Just like he planned to with me. Oh, no, 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 no. All the time saying you abandoned me when he knew the truth. <sighs> Liar. Hmm. We're missing someone. The crows are all around. The family is there. Oh. And she has her gloves on. Jinx. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Hold on, Jinx, what the fuck? I paid your girlfriend no. to visit this morning. No. No. What did you do? No. I made her a snack. Don't tell me that you literally made her a snack. Do not fucking tell me. You literally. Sheesh. I'm not that crazy. Fucking dying, I can't. <laughs> but the thing is, you are. Jinx, I have a feeling you're about to go nuclear on us. Oh, fuck, dude. I have a feeling she's just about to fucking go nuclear after saying this. Uh, uh, I'm fucking dying, I can't. Uh, I do have her nervous energy. I'm so... Because my thing is... I'm thinking, like, I'm going through all my interventions, all of my strategies and shit here. Like, what do you do to, to quickly... Uh, I wouldn't say disarm, but, like, uh, be able to go ahead and de-escalate her, right? How do you de-escalate her? Because uh, I have a feeling that the more that you plead... The worse it is in a situation like this, and the more straight up and honest you are about it, the the more that Jinx might be on your side. But this is this is also I like that it's a cupcake, right? But also, you, you with blunt force trauma. No, like uh, this is me just being a hundred percent straight up with you guys. I feel like if if you kiss ass too much, oh, it's, it's still all over my desk. Like she will literally like you will not be okay. You will literally not be okay. So you have to be comfortable and open with disagreeing with her. You have to be open and comfortable with saying, hey, you know what? Like, this is this is what happened for real. Like, like this is actually the truth. Because I think that Jinx is fed up with the bullshit. 
Jinx is fed up with the lies. And clearly Jinx is doing this because it's come to a turning point. This is a turning point for Jinx. This is this is this is a huge turning point for Jinx. Sheesh, I'm not that crazy. Yeah, look at her face. Take a quick look at her face. Jinx is having fun. In the moment that, like, Vi is running through the scenarios that we all ran through, thinking, like, she did not, you know, that disappointment comes across her face, like, you know, she's still trying to be human. It is, it is, and they did such a good job with it, too. I paid your girlfriend a visit this morning. What did you do? I made her a snack. No! Sheesh. I'm not that crazy. The fact that she goes into the darkness and comes back in. How she's inducing this anxiety, how the way that she's manipulating things, and like it's oh, this is so powerful, man. This is literally so powerful. She's taking her time, she's taking her time. She's walking into the shadows and coming back into the light with something new that raises our anxiety, something that we can't see. The only thing you can see is that Silko's in front of you, tied up and gagged. Jinx is a theater kid. She has a flair for the dramatic. She knows how to make her exits. And she's like, I feel like Jinx is, is a perfect combination of knowing how to fight, what to fight for, how to do things. And then using your body language as a form of like quite literally sending a message. What's up, Dark Men? How are you doing? Like, woof. Powder! Leave her out of this. Oh. Hey, at least Powder, at least Jinx, let her get dressed. I don't think you, I don't think you would have been too happy if if she brought her in the other way. You know, as soon as she got out of the shower, I don't think you would have been too a lot happier in the other way. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Now, where should I? That's your choice, really. Ooh. Ooh. I could go away. Please. Send her on her way in. Mm. And you can have powder back. The way that she's using this, right? The way that she's fighting through this. I have a feeling that gun is not loaded. That gun is probably just used as a way to go ahead and, like, test her, right? Like the monster she scared away in her childhood games. But e e even through this, here here's, here's what I want to highlight. She wants to know what identity Powder genuinely wants or believes that she is. This is, like, Jinx is, Jinx is really digging in deep and putting her in a state of, of super anxiety. Uh, as a psychologist, a good psychologist should keep you in, like you, like, you can be comfortable in some sessions, yeah. You can be bored in some sessions, yeah, it happens. However, a good psychologist should always be bringing you back to a state of anxiety. At least, like, comfortable uncomfortability is the best way for me to put it. Where you're comfortable at opening up, but you're uncomfortable that, like, some of these themes are making you think deeply and are making you question things about yourself. The way that she's pu just pushing her into an uncomfortable state, right? Just a state of anxiety and having her define herself. Oh, man, man, man. So l let me highlight this for you. Who would you pick? Would you do it? Would you shoot Kate? Would you shoot Kate or not? This is This is some powerful stuff, guys. I did not think... I did not think we would come into this, like, 
seeing this episode with so much still fucking left to talk about, especially with powder. I could still, you know, you can still save her, you know, like that type of a voice and like pleading into it. Oof. Uh, Mini Alucard. Yeah. Jinx's trauma is not going to go away. Es como la visión que tuvo cuando le estaban mintiendo, ah, metiendo Shimmer. Ah, uh -huh. Ex exactamente. What if Vi shoots Soka, though? Trauma's not, trauma's not going to go away. I, this is a huge turning point for all of these characters. And the fact that we're here, it means that, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your choice, really. The implementation of this, it's your choice. Oof. Mm. Make her go away. Please. Send her on her way and... Mm. And you can have Powder back. I feel like this is a shit test, though. I, I, I don't know why. I feel like this is just a test. Like, do you love your sister more than your girlfriend? Or your girlfriend who's... You technically broke up with more than your sister. Where do, where do your loyalties lie? If you said that you had been searching for me and you're pleading and you're saying that I'm still your sister and all of these things, are you there for me? In a way, it, it, let, let's be realistic, because people do this. People do shit testing all the time. And, and in a big way, yeah, it's an ultimatum for her identity. And in a big way, people do this as well at, to control individuals and relationships. If you love me, you won't hang out with your friends. If you love me, you'll make them go away. If you love me, you'll spend time with me. If you love, like, you know, and people do this ultimatum and ultimatums in ways of trying to go ahead and, like, protect themselves, right? But it, it can be pretty toxic pretty quickly. And I think this is one thing that we're identifying, which is, do, does she belong? Jinx Powder is questioning this. Does she belong? Meanwhile, Vi is not in a place to be thinking about this because Vi is down here. Can she save herself? Can she save Kate? She can't think about what, what to do, what to belong, what to go ahead and, and accomplish. These are these are scenarios that are not easy to go ahead and accomplish, dude. Holy shit. Oh, man. 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 Let's take it even further. Hold on. What has she done? What has she done, ladies and gentlemen? What what is she doing to Vi? What is she doing to Vi? Using coercion and threats. Can we check that? Using intimidation. Using some form of emotional abuse. This is just privilege. Trying to isolate. Minimizing, denying, and blaming. Making her feel guilty about, you know, could be your child self or whatever. Using privilege. Technically, she has her tied up. I'm not saying the economic abuse, but like going through this, what is she, what is Jinx doing to Vi? <laughs> Jinx may have learned a lot of that from Tilko. I think she has. It does. It does, Yuria, because it's making her feel guilty about children. It could even include your child self from that. And Jinx is in complete control, but she's also giving Vi a taste of her own medicine. A taste of what she's lost as well. I mean, Jinx learned me. Yeah. Yeah. Ta like, th this is why I'm like, holy shit. Highlight it even further. Jinx expects Vi to make a decision when she's quite literally all the way up here. We make our best decisions when we're in green, but she's in the sympathetic, and like in the yellow and red section here, and she's expecting her to make her best decision. Is that possible? Did she threaten Vi at all? In a way, she did. She did. Make, giving her a choice to harm someone that she cares about is a threat. Using the abilities, like, you know, even the positional powers, uh, nonverbal communication manners, having someone tied up, and so on and so forth, that, that can be threatening, you know? 
inside of inside of it which is why i want to go ahead and highlight this a crisis moment and especially like any forms of threat are dependent upon what is being acted on right so for example a crisis for you can be uh your dog runs out and you can't find them that that can be a crisis moment right crisis moment for me can be like oh i got into a car crash or whatever we all have different uh how do we put it different tolerances for different stress levels here so where is Vi at, ladies and gentlemen? Vi is probably close to crisis. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. This is why, why why we talk about this shit, dude. Because it's a good way of understanding, like, the characters. Personally, I think that right now that panic and fear, anxiety, all of this is starting to go to, and, 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 and truly come on in. Is a bad decision maker under pressure. She is. All right. Well, I, I don't think she is. I think she just makes decisions and then tries to clear them up afterwards. I, I can't. No! Powder, listen. We, we can just go. We'll leave and never come back. Wow. Go. Powder, that doesn't include you. Powder, I don't think that included you. Powder, oh. Gee, oh, the fact that it's still like, oh, 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 oh this hurts. Oh, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> we'll go and we'll never come back. No, no, no. She's not saying that. It's true. We'll put this behind us. Oh, You'll she never is. have to see him again, Powder. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? Her name is Jinx. She's. I'm not a fucking wizard. Okay. First off, I'm not a wizard. I want to go ahead and disseminate this or, like, quite literally just destroy this right away. I know I've talked about this in the past and how you can use this as a frame of thought as to what your identity and core identity is. This is an identity battle. This is. You are a wizard, Ed. I am not. I'm not. I. I. I like, especially, well, it, coming down, Seashell, especially predicting almost exactly this, like, uh-uh. That's why I, I want to go and state out. When it comes to this, a lot of this comes quite literally from any and all psychological implement implementations, right? So you have, or, uh, you have an identity battle happening here. What I don't want to see is, is literally, I don't want to see Selko's words used against him i don't want to see his head just be blown up because of the fact that he can't keep the sin and he just blames outwardly i also don't want to see vice head blown up either because she cares too much about kate not enough about like with the situation at hand she does care about powder she is there for powder but at the end of the day you have to make a decision who do you truly love who do you truly care about do you care about a jinx as to who she is now do you care about the identity as to who she whatever she identifies as or do you only care about her as Powder, your sister? But not the other roles that come along with it. And same thing with Selko that you can go ahead and throw out there. Do you care about Powder that grew up and became Jinx? Or do you just care about Jinx the monster that, that is? Or how she identifies as? People are always, always, like, throwing that out there. Think about it. What is actually a wizard? Think carefully and you might discover your true calling, which is that of a wizard. Traveling heart. No, I am not a wizard. <laughs> I will never say that. Like, like you know, or state that like 110%. Like, my big, my big thing through this is this is just core dynamics and family dynamics at play. Even as a therapist, as a psychologist, being in the room with other, like, you know, doing family dynamics, you often hear this. You often encounter this, which is quite literally you start seeing, like, the person that has stuff to work out, say what needs to be worked out, and then people start chiming in, and it can become a wild, wild mess. Is Jinx even capable of accepting normal love now? Soko's love was enabling her worst behaviors for a year. She is, but it would just take years and years of, like, I wouldn't say years, but, like, a long time for her to come to her own conclusion as to what love is. Because is love commitment for her? Is love knowing that your partner will never leave you? Like, we'll bring this up. What is love? If we're being realistic, also, guys, if my internet cuts off, 
uh, for whatever reason, for, to, from now till what, like Sunday or whatever, it's because there's a hurricane that's coming close to my area. So I'm just stating this out there. Yeah. What is love? What type of love would Jinx look at? And what type of love do you think that she's for? Ladies and gentlemen. Let's be straight up about it. I have the different forms of love out here. I have the different forms of love out here. Use one of the loves in here. This is called Steinberg's Triangle Theory of Love, right? Otherwise known as to how we fall in love or what love means for people. Is it just empty love or commitment? Just having someone that you can call a partner and that's always there for you and is never going to leave you. Do you think that that's what Jinx wants? Or does Jinx want intimacy and commitment? Uh, intimacy in this fashion could be being vulnerable, being able to go ahead and open up and have that commitment and being able to go ahead and have that individual there. Is it intimacy or, or, or passion, just infatuation? Is it romantic love? I personally think it might just be empty love. I think it might be someone that she can share moments with and then someone that like can't like won't leave her. I, I think it might be one of those things. This triangle displeases me. Why does it displease you? This is actually pure reviewed, 110 different versions. This goes aside from like quite literally like what is her love language? This is like what type of love are you trying to find? Are you trying to find consummate love? All three of them. What type of love are you? Are you just in, in for flings? Are you in for being vulnerable with friends that you can be? Are you in the type where you're just committed to one another in 20, 30 years? You know, you might not necessarily like each other, but you're afraid of like, you know, separating because of the kids or because of whatever, you know. This is why it, it, it's huge to be able to go and talk about it. So people don't fall in love with me because I'm a circle. <laughs> but no. Like, what type of love does she want? I'm thinking it's more of this type of love. It's on this side of the triangle. I think, if anything, it's on this side of the triangle. And we can also do that for Vi and Silco and others, right? Is Jinx and Silco companionate? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, is it companionate? Let's talk about that. Do you think that do you think that uh, she's been vulnerable with intimacy does not mean sex, right? Let's, 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 let's clear that up, right? Like intimacy can literally be being vulnerable with your friends or being very, very vulnerable with someone. Could it be? Could it be that? Could it be that she actually is able to go to be vulnerable with people and still be committed? If so, it might just be finding him as a companion, as a caregiver. This doesn't have to be sexual in any way, shape, or form. You can just take this for what it is. You know, oh, there's passion and intimacy. Oh, you know, so on and so forth. So it's somewhere in between this side of the triangle. That's what I find. This, this is amazing, dude. Like, the way that this shows. And we can do the same thing with the others. She tends to have, uh, she tends to have his biggest vulnerabilities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he lets her inject him in the eye. That sounds vulnerable to me. That does sound to me. Lying. You'll be with her a day before she realizes you aren't that girl anymore. And Ooh. turns her back on you. Mm. You aren't lying. You wouldn't Ooh. lie to me. Not again. I'm not lying. I'm on your side. I promise. <laughs> Now I'd be shitting my pants. She literally just shot him. Now I'd be shitting my pants. Oh my god, dude. Something that we've never seen her do with them is like be mean or destructive towards them. The gun wasn't empty, I guess. <laughs> Something that we've never see, it, it, like, seen her do is like be destructive towards the things that she created. Right. You can call it companionate love. You know, it doesn't have to be. So well, for me, that's highlighting. She's willing to go the extra mile. I'd watch out. I would watch out. Shut up. We're talking. 
The top has offered me everything. Independence, a seat at the table. All in return for you. They can all burn. Everyone betrays us, Jinx. Vander. Oh, her. They will never understand. Oh. It's only us. <laughs> You're my daughter. <laughs> and even through this, Silco stop mad at her. Oh my god, dude. Oh, I know, but even through this, like, you would expect Soko to at least have a little bit of anger or whatever. Like, I don't deserve to be here or whatever. <laughs> and he's still like, don't leave me. They all betrayed us. He's, he is in a way trying to gain control. Don't get me wrong. But he's not doing it in an overt way where he's, yeah, Wow. Wow. I'll never forsake you. Drop the gun. Oh no. Oh no. Kate. No. Please. Oh no. <laughs> Out of all times, dude, this could have been handled peacefully. This could have, like, this could have gone in a way where it's like, hey, you know what? We can go our separate ways. It's okay. You choose who you want to leave with. But now threatening her, you've just activated and made things a lot worse. All of a sudden, a stressor, a variable that she didn't have to worry about has appeared. And what does that do? Peace was never an option. Oh, man. Oh, typical enforcer. Typical enforcer. Man, my heartbeat is like, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Like this sucks, dude. This is this is pain. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna throw up. This is fucking pain, dude. I'm sweating and like, oh, oh. No, stop! Drop the gun. Wait, she's my sister. Oh. Vi, she's too far gone. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. How far would you go? How far would you go for family? How far would you go? How, okay. I'm going to ask this, yeah? Holy shit. This is deep, dude. How far would you go for family? Would you take out your ex or your partner for a family member? Jinx reacted to Kate becoming loose and armed was simply a an annoyance. Not that far. Uh, Kate, Kate hates Jinx so much. Yeah. This... This is coming to a huge boiling point. No, no, no. Jinx has already planned something. Run, run. The worst thing that can happen out of this... Uh, the worst thing that can happen out of this is either Vi or Soko dies. This is the worst thing that can come out of this because all of a sudden this might send... Jinx and literally like a, a big psychotic stage where she might literally go wild and ballistic and all of a sudden it's no the, like I didn't mean to do that I didn't mean to do that <laughs> I didn't mean to do that you know like all these thoughts start coming through and so on and so forth like Kate is only adding to the pressure of potentially losing one of these characters because these characters are her attachment and if you rip or rupture an attachment willingly or unwillingly see that Jinx for some whatever reason grabs a shard and then just goes after after Vi and like Vi is gone. Guess what? She might still feel a lot of grief and a lot of moments from that. Why did I do that? It was a spur of the moment type of thing. And all of a sudden, she might skyrocket to a point where it's not okay and everything goes ballistic. Kate is only adding to this pressure and this is rough. 
this is rough. I am terrified. I am fucking terrified because it's one small move away from a literal atomic bomb just blowing up altogether. I know I was talking about the council earlier and how that's an atomic bomb waiting to go off. Now I'm looking in here and I'm like, this is another big bomb waiting to go off that might literally set a series of events into play that I can't even begin to imagine. Like, I, oh, oh, man. Oh, man. <sighs> wow. Wow. A li no, I don't mean a literal topic. You guys know what I'm saying, though. Like, I mean, like, metaphorically. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Now finish it. Damn it, Powder! Wake up! I love that she goes into into this position, the safe position. Weather voice, thanks so much for gifting uh, a sub. I love that she goes into this child child's pose, literally to cover. To cover from everything. All of a sudden, all of these voices are fighting. All of a sudden, she has to teach. She has to watch out. It's too many voices. Too many things coming all at once. And she takes this child voice to cover and to literally, to, like, take care of herself. Vi and Powder uh, and Jinx have a different perspective on the people in her past. They do. They do. But it's literally all of these monsters that, that are coming out because they're calling it out, right? But she's not that, like, little kid anymore. And that's oof. Oof. I don't need to take so much for something. Ooh. Soko, the worst thing you can do is grab that gun. The worst thing you can do is grab that gun, my friend. Don't do it. Don't do it. No! What the fuck? What the fuck? Jinx! 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 Oh no! No! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I never would have given you to them. He still says that while he's dying. This is fucking pain. Oh, pain, Peckle, dude. He shouldn't have grabbed the gun. Oh. Oh, this hurts. Oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> Even in his dying breath, he's still reaffirming her and he's still trying to empathize. And, oh, man. This is, oh, this is gonna fuck Jinx up. This is gonna fuck Jinx up. This is not good. This is no bueno. This, this is no bueno. My heart is, is broken. My eyes are broken this scene is broken it's fucked up dude <laughs> i can't i fucking can't dude oh they really fucking had to do them like that like oh oh now who is she she's more than likely has to take on the mantle of jinx Oh, she's more than likely it has to take on the mantle because there's going to be a lot of guilt, a lot of everything associated with this. I'm blown away. We're going to rewatch this. I need a minute to collect myself. 
I need a I need a fucking minute to collect myself. My I I can't. I can't. G- give me give me a minute 30, guys. Give me a fucking minute 30. We'll be back. We'll be back. I need a minute to fucking collect myself. My heart hurts. G- give me a minute, guys. <laughs> I, I need a minute, ladies and gentlemen. We're two hours in. Hold on. I'm about to fucking start crying in another pretty way. I'll be back. <laughs> All right. I'm back. Oh, my God. I need to fucking get a, get a hold of myself there for a second. Fuck, dude. We're, we're going to back it up just a little bit. We're going to talk about concepts of grief and concepts of everything. But, like, fuck, dude. Like, oh, oh. I mean, oh, Kirio, considering that we already did over two hours in the p- p- past VOD, and this is already over two hours as well, like, oh, oh, man. In five more seconds, playtime, Ed will cry again. Oh. This is yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be fleeting. We're gonna play five. We're gonna play a couple more seconds, and then we're we're gonna repeat this. Yeah, I, I missed your past vod. Didn't know you started it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a part one already out there that'll be compiled for YouTube, and that's already like an hour thirty, two hours, two hours and something for the first sixteen minutes. Oh, man, this is a lot. It's a lot. I will say, guys, I do, like, I will never, like, I'm not going to watch an entire thing, then stop and talk about it, because that beats the point of analyzing these characters live as shit is happening. But this is masterful fucking storytelling, and, yeah, this is, this is beautiful shit. All right, let's go. Five seconds. Not for anything. Oh. Oh. You're perfect. He did it! No. No. I want to fucking yell. Fuck. Fuck. Also, yeah, I, I let me. I'll, I'll talk about this, and I'll talk about the poll on Discord, guys. She literally just killed her father again. She literally just killed her father again. This is everything she's ever wanted to hear, right? But she literally just fucking killed him again. The first time with Vander, right? Like, in terms of like, accidentally you know causing everything the, the death of her family and then again here where she accidentally caused the death of her family like i'm i'm i'm, I'm holding back fucking tears i really am <laughs> this is oh oh she's lost three fathers now twice by her own fan and so what does that do that's reinforcing this trauma, dude. This is reinforcing all of that trauma, all of that, like, everything. Like, you know, Jinx just wants to choose what Jinx is or who she is or what she is. And, like, while Silco cared, genuinely cared about her and showed her all this love and support and everything, she's going to go through that process. And even her eyes, like, it might just be that she's done. She's broken at this point. She's tried and tried to fight against the, like the will that like the narrative that sociologically speaking, even others highlight. So for example, there's a lot of people that hold on to like core schemas or stigmas or whatever that like are pretty fucked up. If we're being honest, like, uh, for example, I, I am stupid. Society says that I am stupid and I hold on to these beliefs. I hold on to these core schemas that I am stupid. I'm not intelligent, whatever. And society seems to find ways to reinforce this core schema of mine, right? Now imagine what Jinx must be going through. Like if this is a core common thing or I am unwanted or I am like, you know, I am alone or whatever. Like imagine these core schemas being taken in by by Jinx and then literally like being reinforced. At some point, it becomes numb. At some point, you just say, fuck it, I've tried and I've tried, and yet it all ends up the same. Oh. Looking at this, I'm, I'm, wow. Wow. I, I feel like, like, my, my heart is breaking for her. My heart is also breaking 
for Vi because Vi is now watching a turning point in Jinx. Like, this was it. Accidental, but this was it. <sighs> Fuck. We're backing it up. Oh, man. A visit this morning. Oh, man. What did you do? I made her a snack. No! Sheesh. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> Still so good. Now, where should I sit? That's your choice, really. Even this thing, what she does here, hold on, we're backing it up because this is a really, really powerful scene, right? As a psychologist, as a therapist, we often run into this, right? Where I'll tell you guys this, right? When we're doing a session, a lot of people seem to automatically follow a line of role, right? You come through, you take a seat at your nearest seat, you talk. A lot of people don't even think about this. I've had some clients that have been going through a lot of trauma, through a lot of like internal whatever that an automatically like they're like they take my seat and they're like so where do you want to sit right and it's interesting how much power they give onto the roles of a seat like do you want to sit in the role of where i usually sit or do you want to bring another chair to come in here to do this session essentially trying to exert power over the session over what's happening here and trying to go ahead and establish themselves in, in this position. Now, seeing Jinx do this to her and be like, so where do you want me to sit? Where where should I sit? All of a sudden, that agency goes over to Vi because this is her decision as to whether or not she truly wants Powder back or to accept her for, for who she is or for what others call her. Oof. Yeah, this is so, so theatrical, so wonderful. That's your choice, really. But the fact that she has two seats with two different names in it. Oh, the fact that she has two seats with two different names on them. Oh, <laughs> and one is crayons and, you know, all of these things. And the other is quite literally her bombs and bullets. Make her go away. Please. Send her on her way in. Mm. And you can have Powder back. I, I can't. No! Powder, listen. We, we can just go. We'll leave and never Oof. come back. Also, thank you guys so much for all the gifted subs that you guys have been helping out in the community with. You guys are wonderful. I appreciate the living heck out of each and every single one of you guys. Like, thanks so much for being such a wholesome community. I appreciate it. I'm dropping this for y'all in case y'all want to go check that out. Appreciate you a ton. But holy fuck, dude. Where would we go? No, no, no. She's not saying that. It's true. We'll put this behind us. You'll never have to see him again, Powder. What I find interesting is, is still for Vi, it was that attack mode, right? You'll never have to see him again. Instead of being like, we could go anywhere. We have, we can get a little hut to ourselves and like be off the land or, you know, we, we can start over. But instead she goes into redirecting attacking mode. I know that Soko's a big thing here, but like for Vi, that would have been like, that's one of the biggest mistakes to go ahead and do is this automatic attack mode. Like, I, I'm not sure if you guys see it, but for me, I'm seeing this and I'm like, I still feel like Jinx is willing to return to Powder for Vi's sake. She truly, she, she, 
she might truly be leaving it up to her. But like Vi is still blaming Silco for everything. Yes, absolutely. But in this line of attack, this this just it added more weight for what's to come and holy crap, dude. <laughs> What do you have to say about that? Her name is Jinx. She's lying. You'll be with her a day before she realizes you aren't that girl. Interesting. Interesting setup for this dinner. Interesting setup for this dinner. Hold on. Right. She puts Powder's chair next to Vi and then Jinx's chair next to Silco. She doesn't like put him right in one in front of the other. In fact, she puts them in the position that she had the role that she has to play according to each person. That is fucking genius. That is so fucking genius. Like the positioning of these chairs and Vander being right in the middle. Right, or the picture of Vander and all of this right in the middle, sort of being the in between. That is like, I, I color me impressed, dude. Lady Wall, and turns her back on you. You aren't lying. You wouldn't lie to me. Not again. I'm not lying. I'm on your side. I promise. <laughs> The minute she she did this, though, is the minute the Eno family's going down. Like, oh. Shut up! We're talking! The Topside has offered me everything. Independence, a seat at the table. I'm on your side, I promise. <laughs> Shut up! We're talking! The Topside. The fact that Silco doesn't even care that she's talking to herself or like it's not questioning it or anything like that. But in fact, he's being very real with her. Oh, oh. The fact that like. Yeah, that Silco, Silco's like, okay, that, they, like, you know, she'll talk to herself, she'll, whatever, I will still treat her as my daughter, as a human being, as whatever, like. Offered me everything, independence, a seat at the table, all in return for you. They can all burn. Everyone betrays us, Jinx, Vander, her. They will never understand. It's only oh. us. You're my daughter. Oh, this door hurts. I'll never forsake you. Drop the gun! And and I think this 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 highlights this as well, right? Which is how does if someone calls you family, what does that mean? Not and, and not your actual family, but somebody else says that you're family. What does that mean for you? What does that mean for for this growth, for growth opportunities, for whatever? If do you think that family that is chosen loves you more than family that is given? That is oof. Silco, Silco, you could you could have gotten out of this just fine, brother.
I can't. I can't. I'm getting too sucked in immediately. This playful look, though, whenever she comes back and shows off these puppy dog eyes, immediate fucking red flag, dude. He, 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 this is why you don't call the police until your personal. Do okay, I'm not saying any of that. <laughs> Ooh. 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 You see, now finish it. Damn it, Powder! Wake up! Remember who you are. I know you remember. Picture Milo. Interesting that, like, this whole role of family and expectations, she imagines the real ones and then the monsters that they, they were made out to be. And, like, so close, yeah, yeah, like, all of this is quite literally just exemplifying, and all this stress is, is reaching a boiling point. She's not okay. And, and even for Vi yelling all of this, I actually fear that, like, if this would have continued, Vi would have been in the wrong. Because this is triggering. All of this is a triggering event. All of this is raising her anxiety. All of this is making it be so that where she has to face these issues that she's not ready to face at the moment. Like, this is, oof. Oh, man. Fuck, dude. In a position like this, who would you listen to? Soko doesn't get angry until Vi hurt Jinx. Yeah. I feel like Vi would, would never be okay with Jinx, even if uh, she leaves with Jinx. Silco's pushing Jinx to kill Vi, too, though. When Vi says Vi, mom and dad, and no monsters show up, it is quite literally just the people that she spent more time with, right? Which are, which are the kids and everyone else. I feel like it shows how much Vi has missed... Uh, yeah, Jinx or Powder. For you, if you were in a situation like this where people are yelling at you to be who you were or to be what you've become or what they think you've become, what do you do? Who do you pick? If you were in this situation, who would you go for? Wow. 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 I don't feel like she betrayed her sister when she gave up Jinx to the council because Jinx isn't her sister. <laughs> I don't know, man. Caitlyn is a threat to Jinx. Of course she wants Caitlyn gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Kate is just a, is a threat to both Jinx and Powder, if we're being realistic here. And all the crows leave. All the crows leave. Oh, thank God we've already seen this. Otherwise, this would have been like... I'm like, thank God we saw this scene earlier. Because fuck, dude. This still hurts. death bro don't cry you're perfect i was never gonna give you up oh. oh he doesn't even blame her for the actions that she took think about it even in his dying breath he still did not blame her for her actions that she took and she's like you know she was starting to tear up and then it just goes numb and that numbness that comes over oof Oof. Oh, it does. Yeah, I, I can tell that he does mean it. Es la mejor muerte de un villano. Oof. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Stop. I'm getting fucking emotional again. I gotta stop. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, no. Oh, no. Oh. 
She was in pain and just reacting. How could he blame her for that? Well, there's a lot of people that would be hurt that they that they got shot, that whatever, right? A lot of people like to make Soko out to be a monster that like all that's only negative intentions for for Jinx, but it's not. It's not. He like he really cares about her. Oh. Oh. Her face, dude. Oh. And then just numb. Powder? It's okay. Oh, fuck. No, it's clearly not okay. <sighs> when Jinx gets too calm, it's already a no go, dude. It's already a fucking no go. That's it. Like, that's game. That's game. I'm sorry, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate y'all being here. But this is fucking game. This was the turning point that we did not need to be at. Uh, <laughs> abort that fucking mission. Because what does that do? Is that sympathetic or is that empathetic? Is that sympathetic or is that empathetic? She just lost her her caregiver. Someone that truly loved her like a father. It's okay. It's okay. Fuck, dude. Thanks so much for the sub, guys. I appreciate it. Yuria, thanks so much for gifting another sub. You're amazing. Yuria, you deserve all these self-care Doritos. You're wonderful. Vi doesn't know how to do empathy. But that's the thing, is... Without empathy, without being able to empathize, can you truly try to get where Jinx is coming from? Or are you just seeing it from your perspective? The difference between empathy and sympathy, like in, in the best way I can categorize this is by an example. I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, no, totally. I get it, dude. I can never possibly understand what you've just gone through. But I can bring in my experiences to kind of get a similar feeling. Man, that must suck. What is empathy? What is sympathy? Sympathy is saying I understand. We can never truly understand what another person is going through. Really, even as a psychologist, even as a therapist, even as whatever, we can never 100% understand what you must have gone through. However, we can draw from our own experiences to get a similar feeling and try and work from there, you know? Sympathy, let me borrow some of your emotion. Empathy, let me feel it too. Wow. It's not been declared yet. Not until the end of this episode. Which, speaking of which, guys, we are currently doing a poll. By the time this goes live on YouTube, the poll has already ended. But if you're here on Twitch, we're doing a poll for what show will replace uh, Arcane. And it is live on the Discord. At the end of this episode of Arcane... The, the votes are finalized. So make sure that you guys vote, ladies and gentlemen. Because holy shit, bro. It, it is... Oh, wow. I don't think... I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think any show can top Arcane. I don't think any show can top this show. I'm just going to be straight up about it. Like, we, we've been introduced to greatness time after time after time. And this show did in nine episodes what some shows do in three seasons or two seasons. And... <sighs> Oh, man. But still, I'm eager to see what other show you guys are willing to throw out there and what you guys think is worthy of analyzing. We'll be okay. Will we, though? She has to become Jinx. That decision was made. Her caregiver is done. The person that like genuinely loved and showed her that affection and everything. She has to take up this mantle now. And she has to take up this mantle because of everything. This is a very clear indication of guilt of everything that must have come through from making that decision. She is Jinx.
Yeah. I thought maybe you could love me like you used to. Yeah. Even though I'm different. But you changed too. So here's to the new us. I am the monster you created. Oh, what the you fuck? I gotta back it up before we listen to this song. Oh my god. What the fuck is this? This is the hardest rupture I've seen in a relationship. And, And even going through something similar, right? Where I'll, I'll I'll share this story. Uh, once broke up with someone a, a long time ago, right? Went abroad, came back. Uh, before I found you know my partner or whatever, uh, had a conversation with them, and they're like, "You've you've changed, right? You've like and and and, it, and it's just this constant like you've changed. You're not the same person you were. That type of a thing, and it's." Yeah, well, what do you expect? Like, time keeps moving on and we have to keep changing with the times. And I'm not the same person I once was. Like, um, you grow and you adapt and you, you change. And, like, you have to be okay with loving loving a person as they change, not as they were. So you keep being you and I'll keep being me. I know. How dare you change, you monster? And it 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 it, it can be a lot. And I'll read this. I'll, I'll read this for you, right? Which is like it, it. I like to go ahead and like whenever I find quotes and aspects of like you know something that speaks to you, poetry or whatever. I'll read this for you guys because I actually find found this pretty impactful. In of itself and end of what it means to go ahead and be there for someone, right? Uh, and be there for someone that you care about rather than just simply be saying, I love you. I'll always be there for you no matter like, no matter if you change, which is I would recognize you in total darkness. Were you mute and I deaf? I would recognize you in another lifetime entirely in different bodies, different times. And I would love you in all of these until the very last star in the night sky burnt out into oblivion. No matter how much things change, I will love you for who you are. And I think that is fucking powerful. I think that is the powerful, powerful aspect, powerful moments to talk about. Seeing Jinx come into this realization, seeing Jinx be able to go ahead and come in and, you know, even if people don't change, like cause some people do, like we all change, right? That's the thing. At the, end of, at the end of the day, we all make four little aspects of of steps, four little, four, like little steps towards improvement or towards maintaining what we have. We grow older. We're not the same as we once were when we were kids realizing this aspect and jinx rupturing this relationship this dissolution that's coming through and asserting for who she has to be man man yeah silko's words are powerful not powder not jinx but you are perfect exactly i think growing and changing are different by growing, you're changing. And when you grow, you change. Well, growing means that you're physically changing. Growing from 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 a problem means you're you're more resilient to it, and you're you've changed. You change every single day. Your cells change. Uh, the the way that you encounter problems, you're not going to encounter a problem the same way. Uh, so on, so forth. Right. So it, it and it's what what's interesting. 
everything stays, but it all still changes. Not all change is positive change, and that we can all agree with. Sometimes we take steps back, but it nonetheless, it's still an aspect of change, and it's still an aspect of growth, and oof. This line, though. this it, Yeah, not all growth can be healthy, either. Fuck. I thought maybe you could love me like you used to. Even though I'm different. Okay, yeah, this is this is already breaking me. I I work with a lot of youth, a lot of adults. Very very fucking similar to saying that I've heard with some, some of the these kids, and even adults coming out to their family. And in session, you know, I'm going to invite you to a session so we can just talk about family dynamics or whatever. And they're there because they need someone to go ahead and redirect and make sure that it's a safe space or whatever. And them coming out or them saying what they need to say and their family rejecting them. Hearing these words, very similar words. I thought you would love me like you used to, but fuck dude it in a very similar setting in a very similar tone and even even coming out and announcing that they have a diagnosis it doesn't even have to be coming out guys it's 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 heartbreaking how many times or how many how much like even though it's you know it's a lot more mainstream to talk about and there are a lot of support networks the effect that family can have on you when family doesn't accept you when family doesn't love you for who you are for what you what you may be and how love changes. How one word or one fact or one aspect can change an entirety of everything and that concept of love is yeah. I was disowned by my family many years ago completely and I really feel for Jinx here. When my grandmother who tried to shield me from Abuse died. I was where she was at. It was just devastating. Oh, Sin Klein. I'm, I, I can't even imagine, dude. That's... Dude, I feel like you've gone through a lot of difficulties in your life. And it, it's... You're you're really resilient, my friend. Like, because coming through that and being in a state of loneliness, it's... It can be... It can be rough. And even in a situation like this, right, where... Jinx is fighting for is literally fighting for herself. Is literally fighting to establish herself, or you know, trying to fe feel love in the same way that she used to, and that's clearly not going to happen. That's yeah, yeah. Th this show's taking us through a wild, wild journey, ladies and gentlemen. And and for all of you, if you've been disowned, if you've been thrown away if people if you feel like society doesn't want you to belong or you know people find you weird or you know you might be going through a lot of shit and people give you like weird eyes or people criticize you or people are saying hey you're you know you're too dumb you're too fat you're too smart you're too whatever it may be you don't have to be alone you don't have to be alone and i will always say that there's this community is for you and by you this is the safe space if you ever need to talk. This is a community, and this is what I want it to be. So that, that way there are no jinxes out there by themselves. So that that way if jinx needed to, she had a community that she could come to and that you may come to as well. Or if you genuinely are having a shitty day and your cognitive distortions and life is just beating you up, you have some place that you can relax in and chat with and laugh with and explore anime, explore video games, talk about whatever's on your mind. Support networks are, are incredibly important, and we all need them to a point. 
and it don't matter if you don't like me. I don't really fucking care about that. I've, I've heard a thousand. This is this is this fucks me up a little bit because I've heard a thousand and one people use it as a form of criticism. Like he's monetizing my, like videos. I, no, even if I did, I think it's more than fair use if if I did monetize them. But none of my videos are monetized. None of my reaction videos. I think like ninety eight percent of them are unmonetized. If that, I. I am on here hours and hours on end, Fridays, Sundays, throughout the week. Because for me, connecting with people is important. Talking about mental health concepts are important. Establishing a safe space for people. And especially in, in a way to save myself as well. If, if I could save my younger self. If I could allow a community, a support network for my younger self. That always wished for a community to be there that talks about all of these elements. I'm trying to be the individual that I, I wanted when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was in high school, when I was in whatever. None of this is, is, is for anything other than for mental health purposes and for the purposes of growth and all of that. For psychoeducational, for taking some of these characters and learning from them. There's a lot of moments of growth. There's a lot of moments of everything. And even going through this, this is what this is why I'm highlighting it, which is you don't have to be alone. And I am taking this moment just to shout this out. And this is just me being fucking real. A hundred percent just laying it out there. And it's it is what it is, and it's scary, yeah. But I've been in a very similar path and I've talked about being trigger warning, you know, a, a several like attempts in my past, the good and the bad, and everything that's happened. And how we can all grow from it, how we can be better, and how we can form these connections. And I don't want you guys to feel alone, and I don't want people to go through a journey alone. This is a support network. It's not a replacement for therapy or for mental health professionals or anything. But it's for you guys to be able to thrive. It's for you guys to be able to come in and be like, Ed, you're wrong. Ed, you're right. Uh, Ed, I love this. Or can we talk more about this? Or what about this show? Or, you know, I really connect to these characters or whatever that may be. It's about forming relationships forming a family forming connections being able to talk about stuff seeing jinx like this it breaks my heart in so many ways and i think this is why i needed to take a break because I, I was crying off screen earlier like i i literally started ugly crying and i had to mute myself because it's like i'm seeing a lot of like people that i've talked to that i've done counseling with interviews with 101 things where they've been shunned where they've been thrown out of communities where they've been whatever just because they might be a little awkward a little weird maybe they don't fit into the social norm or whatever is like normalized nowadays and it's it's rough dude but all at the end of the day just know that you matter and that this is what it's here for and i didn't mean to go on this long ass rant anyway <laughs> oh man with how much you pause and how long you talk about things in between during scenes, if anyone is looking to watch the show for free and tolerate reactors, you're on the wrong channel. Oh, appreciate that. Appreciate it, Andrew. I really, really do. <laughs> Don't worry. Now that I've joined, just blame me. Mea culpa. <laughs> oh, dude, I appreciate it. You guys are you guys are amazing, and I, I really, really appreciate each and every single one of you guys, and even the you guys that are watching and you know on YouTube later on. You guys have made this journey worth it, and literally being able to connect with new people and being able to be there. So I, yeah, I, 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 I from the bottom of my heart, thank you, like legit, thank you. Who? Oh, now with that out of the way, <laughs> fuck, dude. Oh man, that, that's my heart is like oh. But you changed too. So here's to the new us. I am the monster you created. Oh, Staying. You ripped out all my parts. Oh. Oh. Most of all, for me to live, I gotta kill the part of me that saw. Oh, Red but Moon. Needed you more. Oh, no. I hope you know. There's this awesome symbolism with moons that I've noticed, right? 
which moons are a turning point for a lot of characters, but a blood moon specifically like this. <sighs> he said he instantly connected with the song. Oh, shit. <sighs> Man, that anger, that monster, that everything. <sighs> These are the song, bro. Wait a minute, what is it? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait. What could have been? What? I support Councillor Talis's proposal for peace. Wait, 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 wait. 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 I am your ghost, a fallen angel. Wait. Wait. You ripped out no. The time is moving again. Oh, no. I couldn't care what invention you made me. Cause I, I was meant to be yours. Oh shit. What is season two going to be? Season two, just giant fucking war. This is, this is like, ooh, 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 ooh. No. No. What could have been? No. No. Victor, sit there. No. Victor's in there. Oh, I would, I would, I wouldn't mind, but like, oh. Mm. This is war, bro, but aside from war. What could have been? What could have been? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? The, the, everyone's in there. Super Smash Bros. Brawl Ultimate. Uh, you see, why Brawl? Fucking Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Everyone's here. Oh, fuck. Ah. Ah. First off, I'm not a wizard. I was. I literally wasn't talking literally when I was talking about it. Oh, yeah, this whole thing's gonna fucking blow up. <laughs> I did not mean it like that. I did not mean it like atomic bombs. I did not mean it like... <laughs> I feel like I'm digging a grave. I feel like I'm digging a grave for myself. Every fucking show we go into, right? Like, time after time after time. All, like, all these shows that you guys vote for, I feel like I'm just digging a bigger and bigger grave here. Oh my god. And I guess... <laughs> I guess Vander was truly dead. Oh my god. Okay, let's, let's take this apart, right? Let's take this apart. Hold on. Wow. Wow. But you changed, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, here's to the new us. I am the monster you created. You ripped out all my parts. This song, though. Worst of all, for me to live, I gotta kill the part of me that saw. And I needed you more. These lyrics fucking hurt, dude. Like, in a physical sense, like, if you've gone through a major breakup in your life, 
where you've been made out to be the villain, I think you can, like, even if you've been through any breakup, I think you can go ahead and, like, uh, relationship dissolution. It doesn't have to be a breakup. It can be a breakup with a friend, whatever, family even, You like, where you've been made out to be a bad guy in any way, shape, or form. You can identify with this, like, so perfectly. And, 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 and this hurts, dude. Like it, it, it is, it is a really perfect song. How can I get everything? I like that while they're voting for peace, the ultimate bomb drops. While they've now started to go ahead and like they've had these discussions, they were at each other's throat. They finally were able to go ahead and like reach an agreement for peace. Like, and, and this is why this rupture happens. It's two different paths, two different people, two different everything, you know. Peace was too late. Yeah, too little, too late. That's all. Oh. And you broke me and left these pieces. I'll show them. Like you we will show them all. And she's crying and it's shimmer. Oh my God, dude. All of that frustration, everything. The time for compassion, solidarity has passed. He says it earlier. Yeah. But like just the cinematography in this is, is beautiful, dude. Like it isn't shimmer rather the light, I think, but still the way that it like comes down. It's oh man, this hurts. This sucks, dude. Also, welcome on in. Well, wind blow. Appreciate it. What could have been? What could have been? Y'all were too late. Counsel they actually wrote this sequence around the song itself. All oh, no wonder this hurts. Metallus's proposal for peace. I like the contrast of colors, right? I like the contrast of everything that is being shown here. The big red moon hovering over the looming city of riches and gold and innovation being toppled down by a single thing that they created. A single weapon that they created that like has sustained down the lanes. Like, oh man. Soko, yeah. I really wonder what Heimerdinger and Echo can come up together. Them just being together enlightens my heart in such a way. Because it's like they're both learning new things. He might be learning more, you know, technology, how to go ahead and improve. And uh, the, the vice versa, Heimer might be learning more about what it means to be human in that way. Raccoon, welcome on in. Appreciate the, the raid. You just came in and I'm fucking broken, dude. I, I am broken. Uh, welcome on in, people from Raccoon's chat. Appreciate y'all stopping on by. Drop some love and support to Raccoon. At least Heimerdinger wasn't still in the... At least he wasn't, yeah. At, at least he wasn't. I am staying hydrated as best as I can. They ripped out all my parts. The time is clicking and all of these people are about... Aw, oh, dude. I couldn't care what invention... What is this, though? Who is this? Who is this? Is this just another monster of his? Who is this? My dude looks up like this is a main character. Like the... Oh. Is this Vander? Everything I'm going to say, is this Vander? Guys, don't take it seriously, please. <laughs> this is me just asking because this, this zoom in is like beautiful. <laughs> this zoom in is just fucking beautiful. It's like main character shot. 
Is that Zoko? <laughs> oh, technically it's what? And let's see, 30 second, 30 second announcement of the second season. Is there a, is, is there a trailer for, for, for the second season? Uh, Hound in the Underground? It's me, Austin. It was me all along. You made me Cause I I was meant to be yours I think even getting the paint and coloring all of this shit, like... Why do I have a feeling that she's gonna die? This is gonna, probably gonna take off the council, except for, for Jason Victor. I have a feeling that for whatever reason, Jason Victor are probably still gonna be alive. And, like, everyone else is gonna be gone, which is gonna cause this person to announce war. The Noxian's going into war with, with Piltover. Piltover's in a fucked up state and now has to go ahead and start recovery. All of a sudden, Jinx is out of control. It's, it's a multi, multi throne war. Yeah, yeah. Psychotris, without spoilers, that monster and their story is sad. Ooh. Did Kate? Oh, this might change Kate. Oh, this might change Kate as well. If her mom dies, if her mom dies. I'm looking at all of this, dude. I'm like, oh, oh, if her mom dies. Also, if you look at Fishbones, who is her shark, as her mom was probably voting with Kate in mind. This is why I'm saying, dude, characters are going to have some major changes if this happens in season two. Like, you're talking about, like, the characters that we know now. Jinx is their agent of change. Jinx is quite literally their agent of change. And they're about to change to a whole nother realm. The trauma that will probably come from this. I, I, I'm I scared. I'm so scared. It's just about a flesh wound. Jinx is a jinx. I want you to hurt like you hurt me today. I want you to lose like I lose when I play. Could have been. She identifies there's a threat coming. Oh, no way. No way. She probably won't make it or she'll die protecting someone. This is wild. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is yeah. This is beautiful. This this is beautiful. <laughs> Going on with her. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that like her gold thing is like a protective emblem or something that alerts her to like trouble because she quickly turned around and she noticed something was coming. Oof. I mean, this could be an agent, and yeah, technically anything can be. But like Jinx allowing this to happen, Jinx has literally caused an avalanche of change for everyone. Literally, this, this perfection, this perfection. Wow. 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 <laughs> I'm fucking mind blown by this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm like mind blown by all of this. Like they 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 really just went in here and in nine episodes blown us away. In nine episodes, they they told a story worth more in gold than I think most shows out there. In nine episodes, they managed to go ahead and connect us with all of these characters and make them believable. In nine episodes, 
Oh man, man. Who Mel dies and Ambassa uses it as a cause? Yeah, I can see that. Jinx as an individual going around being an agent of change. Arcane episode four, bro. I did it. I did not. No way. <laughs> Doesn't have to be Moxus magic. Mel has a father out there who haven't you haven't known it. I'm blown away. Like I am legit. This episode has completely blown me away in that perspective. Has has blown me away as to what anime can do and the way that storytelling can happen. Other shows have done this in the past, right? They've elevated storytelling, storytelling in a perfection like perfect way. This show though is on another level. This show is altogether on another level, and it's just, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Arcane, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. That's what it is with it, right? Hi, YouTube. We're still not done with you. We're including the teaser right here at the end. I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm, I'm blown away. Like, a teaser's good. A teaser's fine. All right. Thank you, ZMW. I appreciate it. ZMW, you're on it, brother. You're on it. Hold on. Uh, full screen or small screen? What should we do for this teaser trailer? Full screen or or, or 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 small screen? Mods, let me know. Doesn't matter to be honest. All right, well, we're we're doing it full screen. All right, it really doesn't matter. It's just audio, really. All right, let's go, guys. I can't wait for Ed to predict season two out of this plot. We're going to touch back on the ending of Arcane here. We're just trying to go to see what, what's to come. Every way I slice it. If I go after your sister alone, one of us comes back in a box. I can do this myself. No one else needs to get hurt. I'm glad it's you. Had to be you. I'm glad it's you. It had to be you. So clearly we're touching on the themes of revenge. Clearly we're touching on themes of revenge that are still are soon to come. Clearly that's a tasty bit of... That is... Man. Man. But here's the thing though. If someone goes out for revenge, you have to build... You you literally have to dig two graves, one for them and one for yourself in that process. And only yeah, yeah. What what I have a feeling though is and I'm still questioning it deep inside of me, is Vander still alive? Can Vander be the agent of change if he's still alive? I don't know why. I have fucking internal hope that Vander is out there somewhere in the wild being like an experiment or some shit, or like coming back and being like, I'm okay. But like if he was still alive, I feel like he would have been the greatest agent of change for everyone. The more stabilizing. It is hopium. It is hopium. I don't I don't mind admitting it. It is extreme hopium. But like if he was out there, like that is truly what I what I wonder. Is like he would probably be the biggest agent of change for everyone again. That is what Ayayuni Storia. What will happen, Ed? Give us a teaser. Honestly. I have a feeling that we're about to see all that war. And in the minx of it, we're probably like in the minx of all this or jinx of all this war, we're going to see quite literally like Vi and versus Kate versus Jinx, i.e. probably Vi trying to get to Jinx before Kate gets to Jinx. We're probably going to meet newer characters or new whatever being introduced into the series in which this change has completely correlated with or completely uh, changed or whatever because you have to imagine if a kid saw this go down wouldn't this be their agent or a person saw this go down wouldn't this be their agent of change as well like this is yeah yeah and and I'm also wondering yeah I also think there will be war wicked as that is I do I do because then all if Jay survives this he has a war on two fronts and he needs to be comfortable addressing the bigger issues at play here are both the upper and lower city now leaderless Probably. I am interested to see what Heimerdinger and Echo will come up with and how they'll try and restore balance in some way because they are a meeting of both. 
this is yeah. Yeah, this is this is going to be an interesting interesting fight for survival, an interesting overall concept of everything. Everything. League has some sick cinematics. Echo ain't leading shit. Oh man, you guys are into something else. I don't know. I could see him being a leader. He's already led the fire firelights. I'll say fireflies. But like no, like realistically speaking, I am I am curious. I am wow. Guys, Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. I know some people expected 12-hour analysis or 12-hour whatever, right? Uh, we can't always reach 12 hours, guys. Sometimes I'm on meds. I get tired around three to four hours. The meds literally suck the energy out of me. I don't know what else to say. They're really, really strong antibiotics for a cough infection that I have in, in me. Uh like in my lungs, essentially. So it, it helps out with all of that, right? So like literally, even just, yeah, more than enough, Ed. So like literally, like even doing the four, five, six hours that we do or three, whatever, it, it's a lot. And I am so glad to be a part of this and be able to go ahead and analyze this whole series with you guys. I can't wait for season two. And if you guys want to join us for season two when it comes out, I hope you guys know I am dictatoring it. Like the moment that they announced season two is going live or whatever, we're watching it. We're watching it live on this channel. I don't care, dude. Like, we are analyzing it 112%. Uh, we got over 12 hours of analysis over this season. I think you got 12 hours of analysis over three episodes. <laughs> guys, I appreciate each and every single one of you guys for stopping by. And I, I rate this as my favorite show. Like, Arcane is literally, like, I can easily say it's, it's my favorite show. It, it beats all the other shows out there. And all the other shows ranked really, really high. But Arcane just fucking blew it out of the water, ladies and gentlemen. And honestly, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for reacting. And I will say, if you guys want to help out, and it's not me being like, you have to. Help out, like, stream, be better, be bigger, be whatever. I have a throne out there. It's literally parts for a better computer, parts for better streaming quality, better anything. Or even if you guys want to help, go ahead and help out and donate, I, I'm I'm stating this out there. Been going through a lot of family events, family sickness, including my own sickness and whatnot that we've been working through. So financially, it's been a little bit tight. So anything and everything helps. I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. Y'all are absolutely wonderful, especially as I plan on moving out of here and getting a better, going to a better place with more with better internet connection. I appreciate it, guys. You guys are amazing, and I hope that you guys took something out from this. In our journey so far, has there been anything that stood out to you? Anything that you learned? What did you, what was your favorite character legitimately? I, I'm so I, I will be reading this. I will probably be in the comments, like you know, talking about this. If this goes on a premiere, I'll probably be there as a premiere uh, and everything. 